I'm, I'm sorry. Is that funny? Are you are you stand up comic? Is that what you do now? I will consult the bones. Throw me a freaking bone here. I'm sorry I was born with this perfect bone structure. It's time for the Comedy Bone Podcast. Stand up comedy radio with your host, Brian Monarch. Are you ready? God is ready. There are 215 bones in the human body. That's one. I just got that old fashioned romantic feeling where I'd do anything to boner. <laughs> All right. All right, there we go. Episode five. What's up, guys? What's up? We got uh, some awesome guests tonight. That's Mark, right. Mark Ellis, Freddie Lockhart, yep. Steve Simo, hey. Simeon, Simeon, Simama. How do they pronounce never... it in Italy? Like, what's the lineage of your last name as far as uh, pronunciation? Well, Mark, funny you should mention that. <laughs> I feel like we're on a bad morning radio show. I've seen it. Pronu- I've seen it spelled a million times. I know how to spell it. I just. I don't think I've ever heard. Well, it. Well, I pronounce it Simone, but I did. I would. I did uh, some Navy bases for the troops in uh, Southern Italy, Sicily. Uh huh. And everybody pronounced it Simeone. 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 Yeah, they, they, always, they always fade out at the end with the. It's like how they say mozzarella. They say, do they put some of the mozzarella? Yes, <laughs> they don't to be talk, honest. They sing. Everybody yeah. sings. I really and talks like pronouncing your last name, Simone, because when I'm home in Virginia, a lot of people don't know who you are. Like, they, they, I, I just say Simone. So it, it gives me credibility. Like, oh, yeah, if Simone. I'm like, oh, Simone saw that movie and really liked it. They're like, Ellis has friends that are chicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Simone's probably hot. I'm like, yeah, she is. She's a, so, she's yeah, a card. So you're saying I'm your fake girlfriend when you go home? <laughs> Her ass is a little hairy, but. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. A little would I, be I knew kind. an Andrew Simone in high school, and he just, like, he moved there from, like, like Brooklyn or something and had nothing but tall tales to tell. Like, oh, that's fair. Like, he could have been interesting and alone from being from New York, and we were in Arizona. But no, All he's right. like, yeah, you know, I've seen King Kong. I've seen him you know, like one of those kind of guys i'm like oh yeah i can bench like 700 you know that's what i can do i love those people that just have to lie to make themselves interesting they're already uh, interesting there was a dude that we knew it, uh, i went to wake forest in our freshman year there was this guy he was there all the freshman year and just fell off the face of the earth afterwards and i mm-hmm. think he quit and because he he just got so wrapped up in his life according to him he was the number one rebounder in the history of the state of new <laughs> york the he, internet came along and, and sullied all his lies yeah, yeah. What that's the thing you can't find Not him on anymore. the internet oh, yeah did you ever see that ESPN behind the lines about that high school football player that was like not good? He was like okay, but he invented all these tall tales about all these schools. Are you talking about him. Rudy Rudiger? No, this this for real. This kid had a press conference. He had his oh, own oh, I day. Saw that. Did you okay, see yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. This whole it was kid like the acted best like he was recruited. Ever. His whole high school bought it. There was a fanfare for him. There was pomp and circumstance. There was yep. a fucking assembly. His high school bought yeah, it. His high school bought it and said he signed a letter of intent with some major university. What was it? I, he was like, uh, and he had all the hats out like a draft pick. Yeah. And he was like, I'm going to choose. And he like grabbed like the Washington State <laughs> Cougars. He and built put it the on. hype and yeah. they bought the hype. It was pretty awesome. Like, yeah, awesome kind of when they buy the hype. Yeah. Just proving that how bad we all want to be athletes and live a life like that. When I told my parents where I decided to go to college, I had a Wake Forest hat and a Florida State hat and a UVA hat. <laughs> yeah. And I put them on the table just to build that suspense for a that's, little bit. That's great. Yeah. I, I had a comedy store hat, a laugh factory hat, and an improv hat. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to work with someone, one of these places. I'm going to answer phones. I want to do. And you chose the right one. This is, yeah. this is like a, this is a, this is the all-star team from the new millennium of chose, comedy store phone guys. I chose the plastic comedy store visor is what I chose. <laughs> of the, uh, the other two fitted new line hats. Did you guys all hats. work the phones at the comedy store? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hear your phone spiel. I think Freddie trained, uh, Steve and then Steve, uh, trained me. It was, it, it was kind of like we were all around there at the same time. And then by the time I got there, Steve was getting bigger. Freddie was getting bigger. Freddie just done his first Kimmel spot. And I right. was like, these guys are, these guys are cool. This is the, this is the in crowd. Right. And you get to hang out with that generation that was just above you. And it's the best feeling in the world. Well, this now. is perfect because I have, I was going to introduce you guys and now I can add comedy store phone person to your list here <laughs> to each of you there's a lot of people out there that is their best credit so i have no problem i think it still is my best credit, it's a great credit. <laughs> so 
Mark Ellis over here on the love seat. Yes. We have you from uh, Schmo's Nose. You're the co-host, and I know mm-hmm. that you have an awesome YouTube channel. You have a goal of hitting 100,000 users soon. That's right. We're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by uh, Christmas. It'd be a nice Christmas present. So if you're out there, you just go to YouTube.com slash Schmo's No and uh, hit subscribe, and you'll never see a bad movie again. Nice. And you, uh, you're you sometimes on Adam Carolla's podcast as well? Yeah, yeah. I'll pop into that from time to time. And, That's uh, cool. You know, all that good stuff. Was this whole Adam Carolla thing blown out of proportion the thing from last couple weeks ago i guess when he was saying about the women not being funny or was that was that a true quote i I heard it wasn't i heard it was a little stretched or something adam is like the he's really the most genius guy i've ever seen at just going off on a tangent right and just hitting gold he just he always falls down the stairs and always lands on his feet yeah so i didn't hear what he said about women but i'm sure it was funny i'm sure i'm sure it was taken out of context because that's what twitter does it's a great tool but it's also everybody loves to take anything you say ask gwyneth paltrow yeah right and she drops an n-bomb on twitter and now everybody's everybody hates her yeah oh i used to watch him on love line all the time i mean he was just you know the funniest he is yeah. he's so good at coming i up did like it. him on love line quite a bit mm-hmm. yeah he made it interesting because if it was just dr drew it would have been but that dynamic was so good the, the dr drew just being the straight laced yeah. guy because he'd get under his skin but dr drew would never lose his shit like yeah right. he would yeah. always be like oh let's try to mm, okay okay but adam would go like, in the back and kill a kitten <laughs> yeah. I'll, be, I'll be right back <laughs> nice so on the couch freddie lockhart you were on jimmy come alive you're a regular at the comedy store sure. you answered phones there mm-hmm. um <laughs> Forgot to mention that about you, Alice. Yeah, yeah. Um, Helped the guy move one time. That was nice. exciting. Yeah, that's cool. I yeah. do that often. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keep adding to that resume. Yeah. And then we got Steve Simone. Yeah. E- Simone. E- 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 Simone. Silent. Yeah. Um, Spy TV on NBC. Minding yeah, the store on TBS. Yep. And you perform for the trips. Troops. Yep. The trips and the troops. Yep. Nice. Um, Steve goes all over the place. Steve actually was on the Navy ship. The morning of the Super Bowl one year, I remember, because you yeah. just you just flown in to Steve Renazzisi's party, and you got there like right at kickoff. Yep, I was and, on the what? Stennis, USS Stennis. Wow, what what is it like doing cool. like doing That's a coolest. ship like that? Do you get a tour and everything? Yeah, it's the greatest thing ever. And do you hear that whistle to the? Dude, you see, dude, you get to be on the deck when they land jets yeah. and let jets take off. Dude, be, did you have your iPod sweet. headphones in playing the uh, the guitar theme from I Top Gun? <laughs> no, you just hear it in your brain the whole time. It's That's the coolest cool. thing ever. You can't imagine. You have, you know we have cans on right now? Yeah. You have two of these things on, plus earplugs. And it's still, you feel it in your chest when those really? things take off. And how they land on a ship that's bobbling in the water, they have to like hook like this metal rope thing. Yeah. For them to hit their brakes. It's amazing. Yeah, they hit that, that, that pulley system. They had that, uh, I, the USS Nimitz I, I saw. Yeah, cause you catapult off. Yeah, you, uh, you know, my granddad was a Navy guy, so I got to see a lot of that stuff and they catapult off and, and, and they catch them that it's way. The coolest thing. There's a whole sophisticated thing of, I think you wear green sweatshirts if you move them, yellow sweatshirts if you do another thing. Yeah, and there's it's a million different balls ball on blazing. that deck. And those guys have to dress in, in, in full, uh, Yep. We'll cover all the time. And, it, and it's such a synchronized thing, too, because if, like, one guy's out, you can get clipped. Yep. And that rope comes up and cuts you like hot, yeah, you like a hot be. knife through butter. That's cool. Are they still doing the hover jets? Remember that from, like, True Lies? That was, like, a big thing uh, in the, the 80s or 90s. Was, uh, the Harrier. The Harrier. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the, British, the British still employ those in their regular fleet. The Americans yeah. are the only ones who actually don't, but they do. But they're just so costly because it's still, it's always like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Do you think that thing from the Avengers is real? Which one? You know, what, the we, huge ship yeah. where you can like hang out and there's like a mall inside of it. And yeah, they have like and a Sabaro ship and a. I uh, hope so. Well, I'd like cool. to think so. And and by the way, it also disappears. Just that's a bell and whistle. We're gonna throw in for free. We got the power windows, airbags, and it disappears. It disappears. <laughs> I like that. And I bought the disappearing. Whenever you see a movie where a vehicle disappears, it's really a question of the technology. I bought that in Avengers for whatever reason. So but I. then remember the car in the world is not enough from that James Bond movie with oh. Denise Richards is a scientist. Yeah. And that's not the most unbelievable thing in the movie. <laughs> right. Because the car disappears, and the way Q explains it, it's like, dude, just retire. Yeah. Just go to Florida, uh, Q. Uh, Alice wanted to see. The Carfax. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> show me the Carfax. You know what's weird is that I get so pissed off now when I see Do the people the recognize you from that. A lot of people recognize me from the campaign, but I'm not on the campaign there's anymore. A, there's like a fox, some cheap little uh, uh, computer okay. animated thing, right? Year one, it was just me pitching the Carfax. It, it, Carfax. We didn't right. have the Carfax yet. Right. Year two, they bring me back. They're like, we're gonna up the ante. Right. We had this puppet. It was like nine people. Oh, you guys were gonna work it. together. Yeah, they, it was the same people who did Avatar, right. and they're like creating this stupid Carfax puppet. So we do the commercials for that season. 
person, and now they have a uh, it's a it's a CGI car fox. And he's he's and, as bad as like the general. Like it's pretty bad. like he's pretty cheap looking. <laughs> do, like, do you feel like do you feel like Gary Coleman when they brought on that little kid? Yeah, the new little kid, <laughs> like, like Sam. Yeah, Sam. That's Sam. That's right. I feel like the Flintstones so when they brought like, in Gazoo. Car- it's like really we yeah. need we need a little green guy. <laughs> is, it, right? is this a cousin Oliver situation? Is that what uh, this is? It's embarrassing. Are we yeah. jumping the shark? But you know what I noticed too? I was like, I don't like that they did that because that's confusing now. Facts, Fox, all this. We don't mm-hmm. need to be doing that. We mm-hmm. don't. We're not Geico here. We don't need to have five different completely unrelated campaigns <laughs> for one product. It's like let's stick with Alice. I didn't like this fox. I'm going to shoot a fox if I see Good. one. I think, on your behalf. I think we should start a letter writing campaign to Car Fox. <laughs> let's let's yeah. go fox hunting and we'll dress up. You know what? It actually like the way my life has worked out though because I just bought a new car. Yeah, it's and a pretty great car. The, the Ooh, best la thing la. about buying a new ca- it's a Ford Fusion, ladies. It, it's I call it the REO Vag Wagon. And, nice. Uh, it, I'm in. I'm in the dealership, and I want to say, "Show me the Carfax so bad," well, but it's a new car. It, oh, right, right, yeah, uh, yeah. One yeah, of your fans just it. said, "Show yeah. me the Carfax." On oh, here. nice. Hey, <laughs> I like that. Schmoville's quick, man. We got a lot of people here, actually. Mark from Schmo's. How was the? Uh, actually, just uh, just scrolled up. Hang on a second. How was the uh, Spider-Man? And could you beat Christian in a fist fight? Uh, Christian Harloff would beat the shit out of probably he all of us. He looks really tough. I, he is. He's yeah. got those big fists. I don't think I'd mess with Christian. Here's the thing. I want to pick Christian Harloff against Steve Simone because Steve grew up in Philly on the mean streets of no, Philadelphia. Steve's tough I grew too, up yeah. in the suburbs. I would never. Okay, but the anywhere. suburbs of Philadelphia are still like the yeah. inner city of any other. Sure, <laughs> they still re- the Lower Marion trumps any any other. No, hood. Lower Marion's the it's like nicest nice, place. Yeah. I'm not from there. That's Kobe oh, yeah. Bryant's neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. It would be a tough brawl because Harloff grew up in like Bayside, and, like the Queens area, so it'd be. But it's one of those things where they're both such sweethearts. They cry after they beat the fuck out of you. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> "Oh, I didn't want to do that to you. I didn't want to fucking. Oh, I didn't have the." One. They're definitely the like, guys Luke who beat Rick each other in the up. Cage. Did you guys ever see that movie? <laughs> Which one? The Cage, starring Lou Ferrigno, where it was... No. They, they conned him into bare-knuckle fighting in a cage. And, he, <laughs> oh, and he, they're yeah, just yeah. beating him up, and he's like, don't make me do this! Yeah. And then he just whipped everybody's That's ass. That's hilarious. Was that Lou Ferrigno's so role in anything else he did was like, hey, we want you to hulk up. We're just going to be too lazy to paint you green. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. don't have the rights to paint you green, is what it was. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want you to get sick yeah. and painting green. It's the same, like, if you're a screenwriter, it's the same angle and the same climax, but then Lou Ferrigno goes crazy. There's and then, nobody uh, better than Lou Ferrigno. Well, yeah. now, he had a cameo um, in, in, in The Avengers, right? He uh, uh, he, yeah. he was the Hulk's voice. Wasn't he, he was the voice of the Hulk. Yeah. in the Avengers. That's pretty That's cool. Great. I Which didn't is know that. That's still, cool. Yeah, and Spider Man was great. But I, I Spider Man's great because it's a darker kind of tone. It's, it's pretty good. So you saw the new one? I loved it, dude. Four and a half out of five schmoes. Dennis me. Leary like, looks good in it, and I'm not a huge Dennis Leary fan, but he looks like like, like very comic book, very good look for him. Dennis Leary is really inspirational to comics from the standpoint of he was like 40, right? And he had his like act. He had what he does, and then he creates his rescue me thing. And just created this whole other career for right. himself. Yeah. That Hold guy. Hold on a second. What about this whole thing with uh, Bill Hicks? Yeah, that's yeah. well. Th- I yeah. I don't know enough about. I I, I there's I'm a, a huge YouTube video. Fan. It shows like twenty jokes that he says, and then they show Is him it really? say it, and then he, yeah, he says basically it, cultivated Bill Hicks's persona and went yeah. on with it. But I, I I've never been a fan. That's why I wasn't a fan yeah. of his. But even seeing him in that, I was like, he yeah. even looks pretty good in that. Yeah. He went on and to develop, not to take away, you know, to say his whole career was built on that. It definitely started as that, and you can see the similarities. But after a while, he obviously went on to kind of do his own little thing. And then I'm an asshole song and that. Yeah. Kind of that's funny. And the and, roles he plays is, is an extension of that no cure for cancer. Right. Kind which, of thing. Which that's the jokes that are coming to question is the smoking and all these very specific jokes that Bill Hicks mm-hmm. told. But it's like, you know what? At the end of the day, it's like, yeah, I've heard I, it's 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 pretty obvious what happened. But um, I've heard that about Rescue Me. And, and I know what you mean about anytime you see a comedian basically step into a whole other genre yeah. that's cool regardless yeah. if you like him or not yeah, yeah. it's really cool and to i was see. a huge dennis larry fan i just heard about this like eight months ago and oh, i was really? a little annoyed about it when it's i depressing. found out it's, it's, it it's sad depressing. to see and, and, and it's one of those things where you see it and you're like i can't I, i'd have to be a jerk to dispute that he did not completely yeah. lift this whole persona and it's one of the worst thing it's the worst crime you can commit as a comic is if you is if you steal from somebody sure. it's an awful it's, it's totally. the it's worst the sacrilege thing it's the you worst you can thing. do yeah. and i hope that because now there's all these videos out there's like comparison uh, comparing mencia to Bill Cosby yeah, and his well, word for word did. or Dane it, and Louis C.K. And I hope that the public yeah. doesn't get so desensitized to it that it's like, oh, this happens all the time because it, it doesn't happen all the time. And when it does, it's really a shitty and, thing And, and what's happen. more is you can't sit there and say it's like, you know, I'm not a huge Carlos Mencia fan either way, but you can't say that that one thing is the entire summation of his act. That's not it. There's other 
things that go to make him up. I don't think he lifted a persona. Yeah, he didn't lift a persona. But really, and, and they and they and they witch hunted him for lifting a joke. But that's the worst thing they could get him. It's like getting Al Capone for tax evasion. It's like well, that's, that's what I joke? think it was. I <laughs> yeah. think it was a thing where like everybody was like knew Capone was a gangster. Everybody knew Carlos his reputation. Yeah, but what I, I think. But fascinating is these guys are all talented. Like if you yeah. look at anybody that's been accused of stealing, right. and it's gone on since like the Jerry Lewis days. Like every mm-hmm. generation had its thieves. But I don't understand why they even do it. I think yeah. what really pisses comedians off about it too is that it's not it's it's so frowned upon, where and it's so used and embraced in every other art form. Like yeah. rock and roll, A you cover. people make their living off yeah. of stealing shit. Mm-hmm. You There's know? no cover yeah. jokes here. There's yeah. no. And, and if you're in a, band, in a band and you're just starting, they're going to say, who do you sound like? You well, know? here's who the thing. Play? That shows you comedy is near impossible. It's like if we were actors and we just interpreted Shakespeare's words. Um, excuse me, Car Fox commercials. I think I'm an right. actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but <laughs> what I'm saying is that you you would be lauded. You would be embraced. People would call you a genius for taking yeah. words that are three, four, five hundred. Interpreting them in your own way. But yeah. if you even stumble cr- across a premise that's similar to somebody that you're working with, right. they're like, Hey, I got a boner joke. Yeah. yeah. And I'm trying not to step <laughs> on it. it. Yeah. It's awful. But it's one of those things where we're basically inventors of phrases. We take words that have never been put together in a certain series, and then mm-hmm. we do that. And when we do that, that's basically our little invention. So then you see another guy. They they showed recently, this is kind of has something to do with it. They showed that new Windows pad, iPad that came out. Yeah, the Microsoft sh- answer to the they sh- And they showed it in, right with next to the, the uh, Steve Jobs presenting the iPad for the first time. And it was so verbatim, the language they was used. Was the guy wearing a black mom turtleneck? Mom jeans and a turtleneck. Like, <laughs> like literally almost down to the outfit in the same language, innovative, cutting edge, all these kind of, you know, very colorful words. Is it weird? Did they wait until Steve Jobs died to be like, finally, this guy croaked, we can do this yeah. now? Yeah, and the funny thing is, the last scene is his Windows tab crashing, freezing up. And he has, he's like, oh, uh, okay. And where Steve Jobs is like just zipping through it, he's like, and this is where you get your music. It really crashed. It, it really know? crashed. Like, if you can even find the video, Brian, it really crashed, and he just sat up there looking stupid and had to go swap it out for another Well, that's one. my theory about Steve Jobs, is that I think he's like a Jedi Knight where he's more powerful in death than he is when he's alive. <laughs> so he came back in like the blue glowing thing and destroyed this MSN presentation. And, and, and you know what he really is? This thing's probably just as good as the iPad, but it's just how inopportune for that thing to happen at that giant presentation that Steve Jobs made famous, that arrogant here's our next fucking project, <laughs> that Tucker man in his dream kind of kind of yeah. stockholder meetings, you know, those very old school. But they totally ripped him off and it's... And it, in, in, in business, in show business too, that's what works. What? That if you you know rip well, it off. Apple ripped mm-hmm. off everything they did. Xerox. Well, that was the whole fight. They stole Xerox's direct operating system, but they stole and it the by way graphic, of Microsoft. And, and the whole graphic face. Mm-hmm. I uh, did a Steve Jobs crash uh, search on YouTube, and it just has like his network crash. Flash <laughs> will cat crash my browser. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I can't find that. He he um it, he wasn't so much an uh, inventor and innovator rather you know a visionary. Right. Um, Far Cry. You guys familiar with Far Cry? Is that a yeah, buddy he's, yeah. Uh... <laughs> he said he wants to know when you'll be reviewing the crow for your. Will you be reviewing the crow for your next classic review? Oh wow! I was just reading a bunch about that. Uh, well, they're. I think they're going to reboot the crow. We actually had an actress on our podcast. I do a pod, the Schmoes No podcast, right. and uh, which Freddie's been. I think Steve's been on too. Never. We, <laughs> sorry, we'll get. Wow, to, let's uncover that a little. bit. We'll get bit. you in there let's soon, buddy. Uh, but we had Bai Ling, who was in the first crow, on there. We asked her about the remake and whether she thinks because again, it goes back to the stealing thing because Hollywood always wants to remake movies like they they want to remake Beetlejuice. And so guys of our generation are like, no, that's yeah, sacrilegious. Don't do that. Nobody can do that. But if you're a studio guy, you're like, yeah, it's really sacrilegious. We're going to introduce this to a whole new audience, and it's going to make a shitload of money. And yeah. that's a business part of show business that you can't yeah. really deny. Yeah, and I can't say that. Risk. I can't be like, hey, Freddie does a great joke about Arizona. I'm going to do that and introduce it to a new yeah. audience. <laughs> I'd be like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, Ellis. Yeah. I was reading they were thinking about doing a reboot of Back to the Future. Like, yeah, they have such classic characters and actors that played those characters. I, it's so it, I can't accept it. Like, that, that was my problem with Superman with Brandon Routh, who I thought was awesome. But like Perry, you know, like the, uh, the Jimmy, the uh, photographer and Lois Lane, it wasn't mm-hmm. the same to me. It, I didn't like it. To It'd me, like, there's it some me things that like I'm not completely such a purist that I'm against remaking it. Like Cape Fear, they remade and I thought they did better. I, I say I think Robert Wa- De Niro's was better. Watch Scorsese's Cape Fear. It is a cool movie. Yeah, man. and Scorsese's it's like, like on. He, he does a lot of ballsy shit. And in so that it's movie. like you know, it's sometimes I think they remake a movie because at the time technology just didn't allow for them to make the movie like Spider Man. You know, you just couldn't replicate that years and before. And even ten years ago. If mm-hmm. you go back and watch the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, mm-hmm. he was a fantastic Peter Parker, but when you actually watch it, it looks really cartoony. Right. And the effects in this new one, 
Again, you see it in IMAX and you but have the 3D glasses on. But the effects in Back to the great, Future really. are not bad. They still hold up. They don't look silly. You know, you when, know? when it's time to remake Back to the Future, I was always going to say, is, is when you see Marty McFly play Johnny B. Good on stage and right. you don't buy it anymore. But I saw it a week ago and I buy that he's, uh, that Michael J. Fox is up there crushing that song. Yeah. That's my favorite. That may be one of my favorite parts of movie history. You know, they, 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 like they that, that rumor was circulating again that, that it's that October 25th, 2015 date that they revisit, but everybody scoots it up a couple of years and says, mm-hmm. today's the day. Yeah. Today's the day. <laughs> yeah. They, they actually doctored the, uh, yeah, they the, doctored the DeLorean right. panel to mm-hmm. make it look like it was 2012. Of, like two days ago, they did yeah, this. They it was did. like a big thing. And then they did and everyone was like, no, it's not true. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's 2015. And it came out yeah. a couple of years ago. Somebody tried that again before Twitter was super hot. But now that everything's like right live, yeah. like a, a, a rumor you, laughing you about that You can't do that with, with our generation anyway, because every generation has that time travel movie when you watch it, and, and then that's your benchmark for what the future is going to look like. Yeah. And for me, as soon as I was in the theater for Back to the Future 2, and they went forward to 2015, I'm like, when 2015 hits, then I'm in the future. Yeah. I'm getting a hoverboard. <laughs> yeah. I, I like to go, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of retro futurism, so I like to go back and watch their idea of what the future was going to be. I think I was watching Blade Runner the other night. I was yeah. like, we got that. We don't got that. We never, why would we need that? But even in 1984, how'd you, what would make you think we would still have that tube TV? A good you know? one to watch is Time Cop, because Time mm-hmm. Cop came Night, out in 94, yeah, takes place in 2004, mm-hmm. and we already have cars that are just driving us around. Zany and, haircuts that make yeah. no sense. They yeah. went 10 years in the future, that's it? <laughs> yeah, they went 10 years in the future. Yeah. But they went they went Jetsons on us, like all this unnecessary, like people won't need to walk, they'll mm-hmm. just slide <laughs> to the next room. It's like, we do, walking's convenient. In 2004, everyone can do the splits on mm-hmm. a countertop. My dad took us to see Time Cop at the UA theaters, which isn't there anymore, but it was the smallest theater. It was like being in Star Tours. It was like 30 seats in this theater. <laughs> and the the projector went out like halfway through. I have no idea what happened at the end. Like It was just like they that, gave us our money back and we were out of there. The chick from Ferris Bueller may or may not have survived in the, in the very end. <laughs> Simone? Uh, that... She was Simone in that movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I got a buddy named Simone. That's cool. God, she was beautiful, that girl. <laughs> Even at 16, I still go back and watch it. I'm like, she's like a beautiful woman. Mia Sarah. Yeah, I gentlemen. like her. Cameron, were you watching me when I was by the pool? <laughs> and he gets that Cameron <laughs> oh, smile. Check. Yeah, he's like he's a little smirk. Yeah. That's another one you can't remake, I don't think. is. I think the Untouchables are Back to the Future... And it recently came back up on like Twitter or something because the guys who wrote American Reunion, they're really cool guys and they were joking. And they're like, oh yeah, our next project is we're going to redo Back to the Future. And then it just got blown out and everybody's like, no, these guys can't do it. And they're like, mm-hmm. guys, guys, we're joking. You're allowed to be sarcastic in less than 160 characters. I'll tell you this. I, I'd be open to a Back to the Future addition to the existing trilogy because here's this. I'm and always and, for and, that. And, and, and this is blasphemous. Yeah. I love all three. Don't get me wrong. But mm-hmm. the, the first one's really good. Yeah. The second one's a repeat of the first one, almost to the exact scenes. Yeah. And the third one, they found another way to repeat all the same jokes, all the same scenes. In, in the Wild time. West. In the Wild West, yeah. you know. And so they keep rehashing this story. I don't blame them because it was a good story. Yeah. But I wouldn't be opposed to Zemeckis saying, you know what, let's do a fourth installment uh, and, and have a new guy and, and try something you know in addition to that and i know it's like the star wars uh prequel kind of thing it's it should be left alone but you know time travel is that thing and they define time travel for the layman's they made the rules you know back yeah. to the future did he those are the rules now like before that there were some rules but now those are the rules so i think the only authority who could come back and speak on it would be Zemeckis and and, and see, uh, I disagree. Like, I think time travel's been around since like H.G. Wells. The time. No, you're machine, right, but the, but the modern rules as we know and, it, though. And it's, yeah, and it, it, but that's like a basic premise, and I think it would be more rewarding for somebody to to completely out, start a new one. Yeah, to put your own spin on it. Well, the, to me, it's so you'd not, rather see, you'd rather just have them remake Back to the Future than, no, no, than no, no, add no, on to no, the no, no, no start I, a new I'm one. Saying, take the premise of time travel. Oh, okay, right. yeah, yeah. Tell a different story. To yeah. me, it's it's not the best time travel movie. I've actually seen better ones. It's it's just the most like it, the simplistic one, I guess, is what I'm trying to well, say. Well, the trick yeah. with any time travel movie is that you have to make the audience forget about the time space continuum right. with everything else that's going on, because otherwise, you're just eventually you're going to find a flaw yeah. in going yeah. back and going. Forward, the but back to the clause. future, you don't, you don't even think about. Oh, why would that sync up? Well, you know what? George you... McFly has to have sex at the exact same time to have all three of <laughs> yeah. those kids, but you don't think that because you're having such a ball watching. <laughs> That's the, movie. the thing because yeah. you care about the characters. Yeah, right. Because mm-hmm. it was fun. I like mm-hmm. the way they overlap things too. Like they actually went back and like he saw himself from the future. Another. Yeah. 
himself from the future, seeing himself from the future. You know what I mean? Yeah, like when right, he was on yeah. stage, that was that's totally cool yeah, the way they do that shit. Yeah. Yeah. And they that knew they so wanted cool. to do that too because they left themselves room to do that yeah. because they shot it right after. You uh-huh. know, the, yeah. the next one. You know, best time travel movie in my opinion is a movie called Primer. Have you ever seen that? Primer. No, yeah. no somebody it's, was telling me I need to see it's, that. It's it's a it's one of those where they take a, a far off idea and make it as real as humanly possible. Yeah. It's just like these kids geek out and find some way to do it and noses start bleeding and things go wrong yeah. <laughs> it's it's good it's real good it's no marty mcfly like whoa it's like oh i'm dying yeah you know is there anybody in that movie like that we no it's no. a real indie kind of movie but uh, it's, uh, one of the listeners turned me on to it called primer and, and it's one you got to go back and watch two or three times like memento or something like wait what 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 mm-hmm. what, what what happened you know you got to take notes during it but well worth it. I really like the butterfly effect. Did you see that one? Yeah, with, it was Ashton Kutcher. With Ashton Kutcher, yeah, it's Ashton Kutcher. I it's, thought it was good. I actually never saw it, but I was going to make an exception for him because I love time travel so much. Watch that one, man. It's right. really good. Yeah, I would definitely check it out. Do you remember last year when I think I called Freddie right away when I saw this? There's this huge YouTube thing about there's this this clip in 1920s oh, yeah. of a woman. Using a cell phone, yeah, 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 and it looks like she's talking on herself. It ended up like you, like you really analyze, and it's like she's just a crazy person talking to her shoe. Yeah, but <laughs> everybody thought they were like, "No, dude, that's an antenna, yeah. and it's proof that time travel is Exist. real." Yeah, and it's for all they five needed. minutes, my mind was like Charlie at the end of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The entire universe was possible in yeah. that five minutes. The, 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 I saw that, and there was a man who's still on the internet who purports to have traveled back in time through a wormhole under his kitchen sink and, <laughs> and, and has video phone footage of this meeting his future self. Um, and he has the same tattoo and the Did same Did his future head. self get a, get a girlfriend? Yeah, yet? and conveniently it's a very grainy, grainy, grainy <laughs> yeah. picture. Remember that family guy when Stewie went into the future and saw himself? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> Do you guys think that if you're, let's, let's say, let's say, let's say seventh grade self. Because seventh grade, you, you've established that you, you like girls, you, you're ready, you want to get a girlfriend, all that stuff. You pretty much have all the same instincts that you do now. Yeah. Would you be disappointed if Absolutely. you met your future, if you met us from today? Definitely. Or do you think that we would be able to impress the 13-year-old version of ourselves just with our, our wit and our charisma? No. TV credits. Yeah, no. I, I would go with, yeah, because I, I, what I like is I'm the same guy with a beard. I'd be like, dude, you kind of were the you stuck or that thing. Well, I've had this shirt since seventh grade. I mean, I'm not even gonna lie. Let me advise anybody that if you meet a kid, if you meet your prior self, buy them beer because they're gonna think you're the coolest oh, adult yeah. in the room <laughs> yeah. for nice. an hour. But I, it, it's a weird thing to think of. It's like because you have all these hopes and dreams I, of, of what you want to do in life, and then this is what we're doing in life. Right. It, and there's really cool aspects, especially if you're a comedian. That's some really cool shit. I'd be know? shocked at what lack of a grown up um I I was, yes. which which I'm not unhappy with who I am. I think it, I love yeah. being who I am, but I would be shocked that in my mind, 32 was almost elderly. Like, whoa, you would have all the mm-hmm. answers at 32. Where's your 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 home and children and your dogs? Where's your briefcase? Yeah, where's, exactly. Where's your, where's your grandchildren? <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> you had no idea. Like, old so people. I think I would be pleasantly yeah. surprised to find out I was cool, but I'd be disappointed to find out that I was the same motherfucker that I ever was. Yeah, the same yeah. exact yeah. dude. Yeah, you know. Somebody's asking if you've uh, been working out, Freddie. Um, a little bit, yeah. I've gotten back as summertime comes around and I start to get my swole on. It's mostly just cleaning the pool after Lola swims. Oh, gotcha. And, uh, what was your, your dog, not your... The Jack Russell, yeah. Yeah, not, not a... Not, not the maid. Not a lover you have come over <laughs> once a week to... <laughs> Whatever Lola wants. <laughs> you know, I had a really good week at the gym, and I always talk to Simone about this, because Simone's like, Simone's a beast in the gym. And I had a good week at the gym because... There's a girl there that I'm really attracted to that I've yet to talk to. The and gym crush. Is she keeps on passing me by. Is there, <laughs> it's a two-parter because do women get impressed at your workout intensity or is that just me and White Snake believing <laughs> yeah. that they're going to be, oh, he's really running hard on the treadmill. I need to talk to him. I believe at the end of the day that there's a carnal instinct that kicks in that they might not even admit, but yeah. This is what I believe. You have the most experience is. of anybody yeah. in this room about this. Okay, this is what I, because I've worked at gyms. I've, okay. It all depends on what your intention is. If you're an animal that just goes to the gym and you don't care, uh-huh. and you're like, get out of my way, I'm just going to go lift like a beast, I'm going to go hit a heavy bag, I'm going to go run, then chicks will dig you. Really? But their intuition is so good. Mm-hmm. If they think for any reason you're trying to impress them, they are mocking you to their friends <laughs> the second they leave the gym. Like, this dork was sprinting on a treadmill next to me. You just have yeah. to have change your workout regimen yeah. and really get into it so now. And... It's the golden rule. <laughs> the thing is, I'm whatever, gonna... whatever you, however you treat them, they'll treat you 180 degrees different. If you just ignore her and treat her like garbage, yeah. 
she'll fall in love with you. Same way in the but bar. Always. There, was, no, a, there always was a guy who came to work out at Bally's where he used to work out. And there's all these guys who come and work out and like real skimpy stuff, have their shirt off, be yelling and stuff. And this was like some like crazy guy who would come in in pants and he'd come in with weights already attached to him. Nice. And, and he, he wouldn't make eye contact with anybody. I brought my his... weights from home. Yeah. He'd bring <laughs> weights from home to the gym already attached to him, do his chin ups, his pull ups. He would just do all this manly like Dolph Lundgren type working out stuff and wouldn't look it's at anybody. The last resort, bro. Yeah. And had his headphones blasting and never once and, and would say yes, please and thank you for things. Always. You know, are, are you done with that? Scariest, you spot. scariest people. Yeah, on. You're was, describing exactly what I do at the gym because I don't talk to anybody. I'm very polite. I ask for a towel. Do you I say, wear camo you. pants? Are you that guy? I don't wear camo mm. pants. Okay, but the problem is I don't look like that guy because I'm like I'm a skinny dude. You know, dude. I used to work graveyard shift at a place called the Hollywood Gym, which is on La Brea between Sunset Boulevard and Hollywood. Oh, the near freaks the, come yeah, out at near night. the lava lounge or the woods. Mm, correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used dude, to go sober up there. I'd go out to a bar <laughs> and drink, and I'd go hang out with Steve for a couple hours. Dude, from 10 p.m. <laughs> to 6 a.m., I would work there. Work, just work there. We'd right. work the desk. The people that came to work out at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> All on God. speed. Like, dude, <laughs> they look like characters out of Escape from New York. Like, it would always be like bouncers. That were getting off of shifts. They were um, coming to burn for, energy, right? For real bounty hunters. Uh, for real bounty hunters? <laughs> yeah. Dude, there was a guy yeah. who wanted to show me he, he had a fifty caliber rifle, and he brought it out to the desert and was literally blowing up rocks with every round. He oh was doing God. He was doing the, uh, the end of lethal of weapon it. shot. The yeah. Mel get, only six people in the world can hit this shot. So that's not a place where the famous people go to work out. No, tons. Tons oh, there actually are? do. Is Joe Rogan yeah. go there? He used to. I oh, thought I've heard right. about that. Yeah, yeah. Years ago. It's right in Hollywood, and that's the cool thing. I actually wanted to ask you about this, because if you work the desk at night, uh, like the 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift, that's like two blocks away from Grauman's Chinese Theater, right. where all the crazy superhero guys hang yeah. out. And I do a joke about it, but is it like, have you ever seen a guy like in a Spider-Man costume come in there <laughs> and get some reps in after taking pictures with confused families? No. I've seen a lot there, but that's... You've seen one washing his feet in the sink. <laughs> you know, oh, absolutely. But the craziest thing is it's all the time of day because the people that worked out at 3 o'clock in the morning were lunatics. Yeah. The people yeah. that worked out at 5 o'clock in the morning were winners in yeah. the game of CEOs, life. CEOs, yeah. So they were like, well, my jet's flying out of Van Nuys. Right. I want to do a quick set before I go to Beijing to Isn't sign Isn't that weird paper. how two hours of the day can... Change it, everything. It, I, I it changes switch. whether you take E before a workout or whether yeah. you take Centrum. It's it's whether you're uh, are you staying up or are you getting up. Correct. That's and, mm-hmm. and there's that intersection of the freaks who come out at night and the ones who are up early to rise, the joggers who see the drug addicts going home. Yep. Yeah. And, and I've recently, when I, I'm going to be 33 next month, when I turned 30, I switched over to, to a morning person, like nine, eight in the morning. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and and you know, it, it reluctantly slow. It took a lot of discipline. Like I have to get up now. I prefer it. But I see this new dredges of society are no longer gone and like more decent people are out in the morning. Yeah. And it's really weird. Like I used to like hiss at birds for singing too loud. Like shut up, you know, I'm trying to sleep. But now it's like you meet a little bit more decent folk in the morning. I hate to say, but it's true. Like, yeah. hey, how are you? You know, how's it going? Yeah. Hollywood's just amazing because you could be driving past a bunch of mansions and like a second later, you're in Bumville. Like, oh, yeah. like what's that street where you get out from the Griffith Observatory and then you take it down and it makes a left onto Western? There's oh, like all, yeah, it's a Franklin. Or, where uh, Western turns into Lo, uh, Los Feliz, perhaps? I think that's where yeah. it is. And it's just like mansion, 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 then it's like shithole, like mm-hmm. one yeah. second later. It, that's it, just the weird thing about living in a city like L.A. is it? Because I grew up in Virginia, so if there's a shooting that happens in Virginia a mile from your home, lock the doors, board up the windows, there's sure. a killer about it. If there's a shooting that happens a mile away from you in L.A., yeah. it's like, <laughs> like it wasn't in here, my apartment. Yeah, yeah. Not You're here. safe. Don't even know. That's there funny. was uh, uh over back in December. There was that guy on Sunset and Vine randomly shooting people. Yeah, because his yeah. girlfriend broke up with him, and, and I wrote him off as a nut. But he was like a legit kid who was just trying to make it in the business. And girlfriend broke up with him, and he flipped out and shot some record exec who died. Yeah, and I'm wow. like, violence was jumping off, B. <laughs> but see, you're awake in the day now, so you can experience that. And I had to do the switch over a little bit earlier than mm-hmm. I wanted to be- mm-hmm. in life because we shoot our reviews generally in the morning before mm-hmm. uh, Christian has his fatherly and husbandly duties on. Oh, that yeah, stuff. he's up early for a long time, I'll bet. But what's great as a comic is that when we go on the road, we get to have that, that callback to when we were 23 and staying up all night. I was in Austin a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And I can't, two nights in a row, I was out until 530 in the morning and you have that great time <laughs> and you come home, you're flying high, you get back to the hotel room and the sun is just about to come up and it's the perfect time because you can fall asleep right before the sun is too bright. Like the kid in Days and Confused and yeah. you put on <laughs> <laughs> called the front desk at the Best Western. Hey, can I get a record player and some fog hat up here? Yeah. 
<laughs> slow ride. How, how do you like the road? Do you do it a lot? Uh, I do it as much as I as I like right now uh, yeah. because I I I don't know how you guys feel about this. I like doing the road maybe fifteen to twenty times a year mm-hmm. is my ideal life because I like being in town for other stuff and obviously the schmo show takes a lot of my time. But going on the road, it's like maybe once or twice a month. It's like it still feels like the paid vacation that you always dreamed it yeah. would be when you started doing stand up. If I go twice a month I'm okay with that and and like you actually sub for me in Austin cuz I was supposed to go then I had to do I a know. showcase yeah. I needed to be in town yeah. but luckily I was able to supplement with a gig in La Jolla and those are always fortuitous because it's like I didn't have to go to the east coast yeah. and I'm not flying back on Monday yeah. morning at 9 in the morning having not slept because the limo driver is coming at <laughs> 5 and why go to bed at 4 and to have to wake up at 5 and so I'm eating a steak at the airport in the morning yeah and i'm just dead tired by the time i get back to the west Coast. you know the driver get your name wrong at the airport i had All a guy he's holding the thing and it says elias yeah. like elias sports bureau <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. and so i'm looking at it, i'm like i don't know if because it was my first time at the club and i'm like i don't know if i should even talk to this you guy just kind of stand next to him because for a you while. look like an asshole <laughs> <laughs> yeah if nobody else comes out no then this is my yeah. guy hey guy i think i'm with you yeah, yeah. i'll and, be your backup rider yeah and then the second you say something, a real Elias does come out of the airport. You're like, oops, never mind. It yeah. wasn't. But me. your mind starts to wonder too, though, because I've never been asked for ID from any of those limo drivers. I'm like, no. yeah, I'm Lockhart. No. Like, come on. It's drive. like that Seinfeld episode where they were looking for that. Uh, did you see that one where they uh, were looking for this guy who wrote this Aryan Nation book and George pretended they were oh, him? Yeah. They're like, we can yeah. get in the limo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And next thing you knew, they were going to like this big meeting where they were supposed the Aryan to speak. Nation meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, who cares? Just asked, is Steve the dude who was on the last Airbender review on Schmoes? <laughs> yes, he is. Yep. Ah. And I am proud to say that the last Airbender review is uh, the second most watched review in Schmoes No History. There you go. Wow. It's well over 100,000 uh, hits, I think. And it's second only to Ari Shafir's appearance in Jackass 3. <laughs> But why Why do you think that is? Is it a good movie or is it just... The Last Airbender yeah, is we, because sometimes people come to our show because they want to know what we thought about a movie. They right. want to be entertained. But sometimes they just want to see three funny dudes shit all over a movie. Yeah. And that's exactly what... Sitting next to Steve Simone in The Last Airbender is one of my favorite slash worst experiences in a movie theater. I feel bad because I don't ever want to put anything negative out there. And then I was yeah. reviewing a lot of movies for you guys and I was always trying to be positive. Can't like, be sometimes. That movie was so bad. Yeah, I didn't write it. I, I walked out of the theater. It, well, it was M Night Shyamalan taking this 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 animated series oh, that everybody man. loves, and uh, and it looked really cool. The trailer, Shyamalan is the king of making a great trailer, Ugh. and then the I, movie I just. Want, but you know, I never learned I want my to lesson like with him. him so much. I I I, 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 want I lost. To like him so he much. lost me. So do I. He lost me in the big reveal like of the village, and it's like oh. you know. When he started off, he started off almost like a Hitchcock or Rod Serling type, mm-hmm. who I love those guys. Mm-hmm. But you kind of put yourself in a corner saying, every time I have to deal with the macabre or something like that, and and that's what he did is every time there's a bait and switch, I loved Sixth Sense. Just loved it. I loved the signs. I'll admit it. I love signs. I Up love, and down. Love, it's love, old school it. 50s horror, and I loved it. Wait a second. The signs the one with the aliens that mm-hmm. fly into a planet made out of fucking water. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> yeah. they have enough technology to... They can mm-hmm. travel the galaxy. And water gets them. Yeah. That would be like us flying into the Ebola planet or the AIDS planet. I think <laughs> South Park made fun of that movie constantly. Dude, it yeah, is planet AIDS. Here's uh, atrocious. You know what? Here's, Here's why I defense. like it. Here's my defense with the yeah, water thing. Because you, because that it's a it's a great argument because if they are smart enough to know what they're getting into. Dude, however, everything about that was awful. Okay, t- take, a, take a human. Take a human. When you walk into a strip mm-hmm. club, there's a lot of shit in there that can kill you. But you're going to look at boobs. There's something you really want in that strip club around all this evil shit. But so boobs, there's something boobs, they really boobs always make everything but better. We're now. we're morons. <laughs> we, we can't travel space. Here, here's here's what I like. And, and Steve's And you know right. why we'll never travel space? Because of boobs. <laughs> as long as there's beer and big tits. Yeah, we're not going. Wait, that's all. That's the all, every guy will just work hard enough to, to know, get that. You have to if know you told, If you told the NASA guys, hey guys, at the other side of that black hole, there's a bunch of tits. They're like, we're gonna oh, figure absolutely. out how to get through this dark matter. Oh yeah. And you know what would. I did like about signs though, and, and he's right. This the, the story's full of holes. But what I do like is this: is I'm a big fan of less is more. Show me less and scare me with more. And the yeah. reaction shot Joaquin Phoenix has to what he sees on the TV is 
fucking priceless. Never saw it. I never see this. It's just what, like signs? He, yeah. And he does this thing where he steps back and he's almost giggling, and that's what you would do when you just found out your mm-hmm. world is turned upside down. That shot when they see the the Brazilian birthday party yeah, when just they a see quick it. Glimpse of it. Oh my god! And that Shyamalan at its finest, just like in the Sixth Sense when that zombie thing walked behind, and just and you hear that drum beat, just go boom. Mm-hmm. You're like, less is more. I don't need to see this freak all day. Yeah. Just show me like Mia uh, Misha Barton under the bed, just. Ah, and know? I think when everybody saw, when everybody was watching the village because it was a great trailer and right. really excited. And then you find out it's not this creature in the woods. It's some blind chick stumbling around uh, for yeah. an hour. That was the Tiger <laughs> yeah. Woods car crash moment for Shyamalan. And luckily, Tiger looks like he's starting to get some mojo back. But Shyamalan, if you saw Devil, Devil I is saw. I made the mistake, he, yeah. He created it, but he didn't direct it. And I like Devil. I thought it was a cool I, I little like movie. I like the closed-in thing, but it's like what Steve says. There's holes in the story, and that's Shyamalan's problem. It's like, here's the problem with the village. Okay, so no planes ever flew over? That, uh, that It was a no-fly yeah, space? Yeah. It, no, You never heard of Sonic Boom? Something like that? And why? And here's the other problem with Shyamalan. Where does an Indian guy fit in here in Pennsylvania? Why do you have to put yourself in all <laughs> See, these roles? That's why I want to like Shyamalan because he's a Philly guy. Oh yeah, right, right. And right. I, I like, I have this awful bias when it comes to stuff like that where I can't be objective because right. it's like, no, they're the best. Yeah, I'm actually them. they're great. Ron Jaworski like, is the best quarterback right, to ever I live. I have that. That I'm from a very provincial area. It's like you, 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 you take care of your own. You're. It's about family. It's about neighborhoods. It's about friends. It's about and they and they're guy. the only ones who can shit on their own too. Correct. You won't make it, and that's why I like. <laughs> I want to like Shyamalan so bad. I want like I would love to have Philly to have their version of John Hughes. Like John yeah. Hughes was a brilliant filmmaker. He made Chicago seem like it was the coolest the place. place on earth. Yeah, and high Go school was the place to be. Right, the guy was a genius, and yeah. I was like, why? I wanted Shyamalan to be like the sci-fi version of that mm-hmm, like because right. he put all of his movies in philly or like mm-hmm. my buddy got married in the same church that was in the sixth sense we're like oh my god this was in a movie right and it was so cool but i see married people yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually it wasn't signs that they were making fun of it was contact that was what they were making fun of on south park um, oh contact yeah, yeah that's the one with yeah. uh, uh, Ed, or, uh Jody jody harris is it jody foster in yeah. that one jody foster yeah, matthew yeah, yeah. mcconaughey it's a really cool movie and that and family guy had said it perfectly uh in an episode where they're like wait so everything got ruined and then they write in that oh we built a backup one. Oh yeah just off japan and we'll use that one yeah and we'll go with that kind of was, fell apart. turns out there was nothing wrong with in, in the first place yeah, yeah but i think how you feel about time travel movies is how i feel about sci-fi movies like that where it's humans exploring outer space mm-hmm. where even if it's atrocious i still you're gonna get my 15 bucks now i may i, I paid to see wing commander in the theater because i wanted to see the star wars episode one trailer you know and that then, sounds <laughs> like a free video game my brother and i well it was a huge <laughs> it sounds like one that would come on the back of a cheerios box <laughs> Put it in your Nintendo. It's smoking. It's on fire. <laughs> what the hell? It Put was, this code in at wingcommander.com yeah, yeah. and you can play for free. It was terrible. Me, me and my brother were like, after the Star Wars show, we're like, oh, we'll hang out watch Wing Commander. It could be cool. Ten minutes, we're like, let's get the hell out of here. Uh, it's yeah. it that was bad. bad. What are the hidden but, gems that nobody... Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, what are the I'm hidden sorry. gems that like most people don't know about? Like a movie that you need to see. Like once in a while, you just like everyone's like, you didn't see that? You have to see that. And... Is there something like that? As isn't... far as uh, space exploration movies, definitely Return to Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. No, no, it's mm-hmm. uh, actually there's a really good one, really bad one. Moon is a really cool one. Oh, that's, that, I've seen Moon. It's kind of under the radar. It was made by David Bowie's kid. I like that kid, actor a lot. What's that guy in it? That that guy. Uh, that's the guy solitary on the moon by himself. Yeah, Sam. Uh, he's in westerns. He was in the Jesse yeah. James. How one. did he get to the moon? He's a good actor. Mm-hmm. I like that guy. He's got that bizarre weirdness that always kind of like uh, eccentric, almost like Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah, his name is Casey. He was in Matchstick men with Nicolas Cage mm-hmm. and it's uh, I think it's Sam something but Duncan Jones directed it and uh, he's stuck on the moon yeah it's highly rated on Netflix well mm-hmm. because I would for me it's personalized the yeah. ratings it's like four and a half stars <laughs> I was like it's a good movie yeah and then if you want a really bad one see uh, Planet of the Dinosaurs it is a laugh riot from start to finish. <laughs> wonderfully aunt, bad my aunt gave it to me when I on VHS when I was like 10 years old for uh, my birthday and it's the best present I've ever gotten it's <laughs> it's so bad planet of the dinosaurs planet of the dinosaurs came out in 1979 something you got to get on eBay basically you need to get on eBay yeah, if yeah. you want it but it is worth the purchase I bought Trust um me. the Star Wars Christmas special on e- on eBay once that's all awesome. terrible terrible the first appearance of the legendary bounty hunter known as no, yeah, yeah. Boba Fett but he's animated yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's animated. It's like those Ewoks Battle for Endor movies. Remember, it was like it, it, they had the Ewoks and like Wilfred Brimley. Oh yeah, yeah. There was, was two of them. Around. There mm-hmm. was two of them. Yeah, yeah. And then one of them was like uh, they had this little furry guy, and they lived in the forest. And yeah. 
It was I like those because I was a kid, but you're like yeah, it's Star Wars. I, I, At least there wasn't musical numbers like in this in the, in the uh, Christmas special. It was just like one musical number after another after another. It was like there were like ten like minutes each. Yeah, numbers drive me nuts. That's why I don't like movies from 1950 to 60 so much. I can't stand studio movies. It's like why did you just decide to start singing? That's weird. <laughs> like, I, and that's the thing about the talent of singing. No matter how good you are at it, it's just creepy. It's like whipping your dick out and beating off. It's like I don't care how good. Like even if your dick was huge, I'd be like, yeah, it's big, but Jesus, dude, come on. Why are you doing? that here yeah why now that's it's a like, funny musical spoof is instead of every time you would be singing just have somebody masturbating yeah because that's like where do i look where do i look you know where do i look when you're singing it's like they sing in your eyes like don't don't make eye contact yeah, any sing. musical you watch even rock of ages which is like our music we love that shit it's, it, they start singing and it takes a good five minutes to be like it's like watching a cover band like simone and i will go see the atomic punks they're a Van Halen cover band every uh-huh. time they're in town, but we always have that laugh where it's like, we need a beer and a couple songs to get through us before we can pretend. Yeah, we right. is. Well, si- singing to me is always funny. It's hilarious, it's even always, if you're great at always it. Always funny. And, and we're all in admiration of it. I love a good singer. I think that Adele chick, she can sing her ass off. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, if she was here alone in a room with me doing that, going, I could have had it, I'd be like, come on, shut the fuck up, please. Come <laughs> on, don't, so seriously, somebody's going to hear us. Funny. <laughs> it's like that moment where the emotion just hits them so much and they're like, uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. And they start to hum first. <laughs> they, <laughs> and they try to fight and then yeah. they start moving their yeah, head yeah, and yeah. like, that's the uh-huh. funniest yeah. shit that's, in It's life. so hilarious. And then they hold their ear and then they play Jenga, oh, air Jenga. So they once they funny. touch the buds yeah, in the yeah. studio, yeah. that means that Steve Perry is really yeah. feeling something. Yeah. Dude, the, I, I love going to the Third Street Promenade and seeing the street musicians because like, mm-hmm. I always give them a buck. I'm like, support Some yeah. of them are pretty good. But you know what's yeah. cool is being blind. So blind fun. singers know how to look because they don't, they're not aware of what they look like. So they're not really like, I wouldn't mind Stevie Wonder or Ray Charles just singing away. I'd be like, go ahead. You know? All right, don't you, this is one of my favorite things in life is when somebody sings and then they change, <laughs> they change styles in the middle. Oh yeah, where they're like, <laughs> "My father, <laughs> he never loved me." <laughs> like that. Out of nowhere, it is a guaranteed laugh every time. I there's it's, some girl killing it, hot chick on the promenade. Yeah, and she's like singing beautiful, and then, that's when I realize yeah. you yeah. are no good. So they really rip into yeah, it. It's like, like, they like that they're setting it. you up with a high note. It's like they're building so, you up, yeah. and then they're gonna rip your heart funny. out. So and girl, funny. girls always in every talent competition do they do the gurgly throat thing? Like, <laughs> they do the Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Who was it? Melissa Villasenor can do really good impressions of singers. Oh, she's like, fantastic. She is amazing. Yeah. She can kill it with those things, and she can do that throaty thing. But it's like talent is an amazing. Er, singing is an amazing talent, but it's so goofy. It's, it's so weird. Hysterical. Like I love Eddie Vedder, but if he's like, you mind if I play a couple of songs? I'd be like, nah. can we go to the park and gather like ten thousand people and a microphone? It's an That's awkward, so... intimate experience yeah. to have somebody playing an acoustic guitar and singing to you because as a fan, you don't know how to react when they're when you're in the staples center yeah, and smile? ten thousand people are yeah. rocking out to the scorpions you just yeah this yeah. is great yeah. but when it's like three of us and like if, if brian took out a guitar he's like i really want to sing you guys a song <laughs> like what do you you're just yeah. like let's try not to laugh tommy, as a team. <laughs> tommy for instance can sing his ass off at the, the comedy uh, the store town coordinator. but have you ever been stuck with him and it's just you and him in a room and then the guitar comes out and you're like oh no and it's just all of a sudden i seem oh, okay. to recognize <laughs> so you're just okay. like oh no that's one of the great things about the comedy store it's one of the the great kind of legends that i love is that tommy has he has like a lot of power he's a town coordinator there so he does all the lineups and stuff right but he was trained when he got hired there in the early 2000s he was trained by one freddie lockhart yeah. on the phone tommy hanks as i like to call him now there's no <laughs> crying at the comedy store mitzi doesn't think you're funny okay <laughs> Uh, that I, Tom Hanks is getting so good. It's been getting pretty nasty. I mean, uh, Simone have been working on it. There's, uh, <laughs> there's, there's no crying in baseballs. I feel it, like one of those scouts that, 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 that looks at high school kids when they're like in eighth grade and yeah. they're going to be great basketball players. You are now a sophomore in high school. Yeah. You saw the diamond in the rough a long time ago. I was getting lampooned for this impression. Like, who's yeah. that? Helium Jones? You're Whoever s- Helium Jones. You're starting to get letters from reputable universities. Look, Cali- Kentucky's not knocking down your door yet, but. Right. But you know what it is? A lot of times you find an offshoot of them. Or uh, uh, what happened with me is, you know, I went so much for the jovial Tom Hanks. Now I'm going World War II Tom Hanks. (laughs) (laughs) We stormed Normandy. It was very scary. A lot of men died. How many impressions are you up to? See? See? It starts perfect. Yeah, that's the thing is that if you let Freddie warm up for five minutes, but it has to be on stage, so it's weird for the audience to watch that. But five minutes later, you'll have Tom Hanks. With the other impressions you do, you just nail them. If I can ring in Tom Hanks, it will, and I can get to him anytime I want to. Yeah. 
I'll be. I'll have a, a, a white Morgan Freeman now. Everybody loves Morgan Freeman. Dude, how <laughs> great would would it be to be one of Freddie's kids? <laughs> so like when he's reading you bedtime stories, oh, yeah. it's Tom Hanks. I play it's everybody. Uh, when I was when I was living in my single apartment, the landlord accused me of you got too many people in there. I hear people. I know you got other people in there. I'm like, I swear to God, they're all me. Yeah, it's a, all me. To she a goes, five year old kid, yeah. When you hear those voices, oh yeah. It, like my dad had two voices, and he would swear when he would read the Three Little Pigs, <laughs> and we were we may as well have been in the Avatar universe. We were taken away. Oh my God. There was a, some Christmas one of those Christmas specials, like uh, claymation kind of things from the '60s, but we kind of grew up on. That Nicole, my girlfriend, will repeat the voices from and make me die laughing. It was that Kubla Krauss. He goes, uh, he goes, who's the most handsome of them all? And then the little thing will go, you are Kubla, you are. And I'll just hit the floor every time she does that. It's so fucking funny. It's like that 1970s Rankin Bass, uh, Christmas Bass. specials, you know, like all those, he, you know, uh, night, um, what was it? It was the night before Christmas where the mouse wrote the letter to Santa. Like, you know, you're not real. You're a dick. You know, and the whole town was like, what the fuck did you do that for? How many impressions do you have in your repertoire now? Um, I'm working on a bunch of new ones right now. Right now, i got also Russell Brand working on that one. Gotta, oh, nice. <laughs> got to get my voice a little bit higher, but it comes from Essex, England. They don't speak the Queen's English. They speak real broken Cockney. So if I can keep finding a way to talk narcissistically about myself a lot <laughs> like Russell Brand, I think I'll have something there. Um, and then there's Tom Brooker on NBC's Nightly News, and I can do absolutely nothing with that. But it's a lot of fun to do. Well, and you do the Morgan Freeman I've heard you do. That's uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. You know, nah, Tell nah. them the story about Ice T when you were doing morning radio in Alaska like seven years ago. Oh, what did I? Oh, you, oh my God. Were, were you there? Was that Jay no, Larson? I with went me. up the following oh. month and they told us the story. I, I, oh, that was that bad. I would, I went on a radio show in Alaska and it was like seven years ago with Jay Larson. We co headlined a show down there. And some kid calls the radio station a lot there, and apparently he loves iced tea, and they wanted me to act like I was iced tea. <laughs> and uh, they're like, we're going to get him on the phone. Will you talk to him like iced tea? I'm like, sure. And at the time, I used to you know, use the word stupid with iced tea because his his lisp makes everything sound funny with an S. Yo, what's up, stupid? <laughs> and so they have this kid call in, and, and, and so they're like, hey, you know, uh, uh, what's a Seth? That's a great retarded kid name. Yeah. Seth is on the line. <laughs> And, uh, and, and I'm like, yeah, what's up, stupid? And Bob cuts my, he's like, he's down syndrome. No, you can't. I was like, oh my God. They and didn't tell you they that? Didn't tell they didn't tell me he Freddy. was down syndrome. And I felt so fucking horrible. Well, and the have... best, they played us the clip and they were saying like what yeah. a great guy Freddie was. And <laughs> yeah. to their credit, those guys weren't making fun of this dude. Not was, at all. He was like, he just was a nice a kid. He was a respected part of the show. Yeah, he was a good mm -hmm. kid who they let them call in, and he was a regular fixture. But I opened up with, what's up, so, stupid? And right. stupid is so, good in the rap community anyway. Yeah, yeah I right. was telling yeah, yeah, But yeah. the best was... But not in the white the Down Syndrome Alaskan community. <laughs> they're playing the clip, and Freddie doesn't come out of character. He just goes, oh, snap. I didn't know that. Oh, snap. I didn't know that. <laughs> that was the... That was the like best. one of my first times doing radio, and, and, and in one foot and i love fishing i'm a fisherman but i shat on fishermen in one felt swoop i was like well fishermen are idiots and bob's like well 80 percent of the employment here is like fishermen i was like okay well guess we're not gonna get a show tonight <laughs> and then i shit on the down syndrome kid i'm like am i coming back to alaska just kept ever? stepping on your own toes yeah, and, I was after like, yeah. yeah. and this was like oh right I'll, I'll just shut up and the next day it was fine but I, yeah i opened up with the worst thing you could have possibly called that kid and i've always had like a special affinity for down syndrome kids too. too like i really genuinely love them and and, and have worked with them and, and like them and, and and i felt so, so bad pure. when i said that i just was like oh that was so fucking out of line but yeah i just said i it was like um uh who's the actor said in reservoir dogs i shat my pants and i swam yeah it. no it wasn't even that bad it was like you didn't do anything vicious you right didn't do anything mean it was just you used the word stupid you didn't know the context of everything but the funniest thing ever was i guess they said they told you but they don't you don't hear the djs telling freddie they wrote it down or something yeah he's down syndrome and he they wrote doesn't break character this year freddie was like what's up stupid yeah. pause oh snap i didn't know that <laughs> that's so, so funny. funny there's uh, something to do in radio when like early because every time i did radio it would always go really well on the road but there'd be that one stupid thing that i'd say without fail yeah i would put my jam my foot in my mouth every and time as you're saying one it, thing you're like why am i saying this yeah, i'm I on a roll what do you it's yeah. like i if there's not la if there isn't an audience laughing at you and you're just getting on a roll by yourself right. you're eventually going to hit <laughs> hit shit one of my first yeah. ones too was in kansas city i did one of those like radio tours where all the radio stations are in one building so like you have to do the country radio station the hip-hop radio station and then they have like the 
Rock one with this guy Johnny Dare. They're like Johnny Dare, man. He's out. Of, he's out of control. He's <laughs> you. You better be ready for you ready for Johnny. Whoa, Dare? we got a traffic yeah. sports five past the hour. And as I'm driving there, they're shitting him on me on the radio. Like we got this Freddie Lockhart guy coming. We don't know anything about this guy other than he stole a joke from Family Guy. And I think I was telling you about this oh, recently. Yeah. And they actually discovered before I got there that I told the joke a year before mm-hmm. on uh, 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 live at Gotham before yeah. Family Guy ever told it. They stole it from me. What was the uh, uh, accusation? Um, it was a joke about uh, um, being mixed. Mm-hmm. And there was an episode where they were mixed slave kids. And basically, to a T, this whole joke I used to have about if I was half white, I could just go to the slave owner and say, look, I'm half white. Can I take off this potato sack? I, I can read. It says right. potato. I'm not, I'm not supposed to be here. Verbatim, they went out the whole thing. And I'm still a fan of Family Guy because I know some lowly writer whose job was on the line came to the comedy store one night and was like, got one. Found you went, on YouTube yeah, or something, maybe. Found me on YouTube, yeah. scoured it, and took it to his boss. And Does they that gave make us hypocrites? Because I've heard the same thing about, about Family Guy a lot of times. And, and it's like, because we always, we shit on guys on comics that we know the steel material. But Family Guy just makes me so happy when I watch it. Yeah. It's almost like the I'm Robin, willing, it's like we're all willing to donate one joke. The to Robin that show. Williams effect almost. It's like yeah. he does it so much better than we do. <laughs> he's, he stole a joke, but look, he's got a beard now. He's yeah. making Will Hunting feel better yeah. about himself. He's got a he's faux okay. British accent while in Goodwill Hunting even. It's I like, feel like oh. it's worse when it's a stand up. Copying a stand-up, though, you know, at least it's a different, uh, it's a different media. media. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's always wrong. It is still wrong. I, no, You're I agree too. Man. I agree. I agree too. I think if you, especially in this thing, that's all we have is these words we've strung together and made them mm-hmm. ours. It's like yeah. that's all we have. Inadvertently, what'll happen? Like Cap and I hang out a lot, so we borrow from each other's vernacular, yeah, that right? And that happens. Mm-hmm. Like even with Ahmed being friends with Vince Vaughn, they sound just alike. And it's not like him so much trying to be like Vince Vaughn. They just have this. Very similar sound that after a couple of years hanging out, you start to merge with the guy. I'm sure it's more a med trying to sound like Vince Vaughn. But he doesn't take his unique concepts and use them. Right. On yeah, to, Plus, yeah, yeah. I will say this, though. I think that there's something floating around in the zeitgeist. Oh, yeah. Like we could tap into something. Another comic could tap into it. And it could be developed independently. And that's that's yeah. a proven say, fact that creative ideas, like when Alexander Graham Bell was correct. working on things, somebody across the world was. Correct. When the Wright brothers were at Kitty Hawk, there was a guy clear across the world racing them to do it too. Like, yeah, Steve, maybe pull the mic a little closer to you. Oh, fascinating. Or, you can pull it to you. You can lay, lay back. But it is. It's the <laughs> idea of common thinking. I feel like such a slob because I'm like all the way back in this thing. Yeah. I'm like one Mike's Hard Lemonade from being my dad <laughs> in a hammock after mowing the lawn. Just, oh, God. At least the mic moves. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a mobile mic. I didn't know that there was another dude working on the airplane the same time the Wright brothers. Is that yeah. the guy that you see? Because there's a there's the a funniest clip in the history of clips, and it's funnier than any cat or. I think he's the one who goes the up the ramp and falls down. No, I like okay. the guy with the nine wings on each side. Oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah, wing, yeah. wing, 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 yeah. wing. Yeah. They've used <laughs> it in a lot of like commercials and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. In, in montages. <laughs> you imagine him pitching that in a boardroom? Okay, see, the Wright brothers got two wings. Right. My machine, it's yeah. got twelve of them. <laughs> Kids will come flying. Yeah. You got to have 12 wings to bring me out of the uh, fella. <laughs> and and the, the whole idea is like, yeah, at the time they were working on it. And then there was a guy clear across the world who was he ran out of funds, but he was very close to doing it, too. And there are guys from Ohio who went down to North Carolina because the winds were blowing. And so basically they caught a gust of wind for, you know, X amount of times. So they, they weren't exactly running Delta, fellas. Let's be real here. <laughs> it was yeah, God's yeah. breath for there that was 19 the, seconds. Yeah, it was 19 seconds. You're in the air for 19 seconds. At what point do you feel like, holy shit, we got to land this thing? Is that like second? Because because you're flying for the first yeah. time ever. Right. So like the first few seconds, you're like, this is fucking great. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, take no. it down, take it down, take yeah. it down, dude. My parents are coming home right now. Yeah. Got to get everybody out of here. Get rid of the keg. It's that little like when you're a little kid and something ends up working that you're like you're like the dog that caught the car. Like, what do I do now? Yeah. Like, oh shit. Do you think they had a sitcom moment as soon as they actually landed? They looked at each other and they went seat belts. <laughs> what was the one where um the the movie from the '80s where uh, River Phoenix and Ethan Hawke? fly around in some little spaceship that they find. Do you know this that I'm talking about? And they're both kids in it. They were both boys, like 12, 11 years old. It was uh, Stand they, By Me era for uh, River before, Phoenix? Maybe even bef- probably before. Stand By Me was like 86. This was maybe like 85. Mm. Like um, Ethan Hawke was, you know how he looked like a little bird? <laughs> you know, like he looked like a full-on bird in yeah. this. Like he was just straight up like like beat downtown. This guy looked like a pussy. Um, but it was like they, they flew around in a little spaceship and then like, you know, you're a kid. It's like, I want it, I want that to happen. Oh yeah. By the way, uh, this piece that, that reminded me of another movie that came out around that time that if I can do the space thing, I want to come back to that flight of the navigator. Yeah. That's that a movie? great no, movie. I don't remember that. Oh my God. Oh, Simone, you got to watch it. Is this it, the one where they played the video game to like 
No, that was that was a Starfighter when he played a video game. Yeah, that was you, that was yeah. Starfighter. Flight of the Navigator was 1986, also, and the little boy. It's also time travel because he goes because it, it starts in. It's supposed to be like 79, yeah. but he fast forwards, and Sarah Jessica Parker is in that. Uh huh. And she's got purple hair, and, and she, she looks good. in And that. she likes Twisted Sister, and he does not. He's she like, looked what is good this? in Honeymoon in Vegas. She also looked good in uh, L.A. Story. She never looked. What good happened to her? Sarah Jessica the Yardbark. Yeah, never look good. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Isn't it funny that she, in, in Flight of the Navigator, her character has a little scene, and she's like, oh, I went to a Twisted Sister concert last night, and now everybody says she looks like T. Snyder. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna think it. Same hair, same makeup. I saw her yelling out of a New York City window, going, no, we're not going to. I was like, what, OD? The guy that plays Niedermeyer keeps writing her hateful emails. <laughs> so do you know the name of that movie? Um, that you were thinking of before the space shuttle. I'm trying to think. It's I, funny because I used to remember that we were talking about the Star Wars special yeah. earlier. Mm-hmm. For about five or ten years, I used to think. I think I dreamt that. Yeah, That's like I didn't we know <laughs> if it was real. Yeah, like, yeah. Was there a Wookiee special? Because when you're a little yeah. kid, you're, yeah. you're you're also extremely dumb. Yeah, and that's hard to you know uh, differentiate from reality. And, and okay, like, did that I happen? really had a thought when you guys were talking about all that stuff, and I think this was real. And you guys, but I didn't want to say it before right. that very premise. Was there a movie where Kiss went to an amusement park and it wasn't their voices? Um, I it was kid, like overdubbed for some reason. Or did I was that like a little kid dream I had? Kiss is genius because they did so much stupid shit. So but, they very well could have done that. But by by sheer volume, okay, they threw so much shit against the wall that the shit is covering up the really bad shit. Yeah, you know, like there's stuff that you make fun of for Kiss, like oh, how could they get away with the disco era or whatever? Right. But there's also stuff that they did that nobody even talks about, and I'm sure Kiss That's because a strong possibility. I think there was a Kiss like a Christmas special or something. I too, honestly that they think did. there was a special where like they went to an amusement park. Sounds like a Scooby Doo episode like, almost. Like yeah, where yeah. they would have like somebody yeah. guest starring or something. You know what? That's interesting to <laughs> Kiss Google. Kiss may have just, guest starred on Scooby Doo. Yeah, Google, Google right Kiss now. goes to amusement park and see if this yeah. is Steve's uh, subconscious deep seated wishful thinking or I always love Simone's joke about being a child when when he grew up because you couldn't do stuff like what we're doing right now where we're having okay. a conversation. Did this thing exist? And you just Google it right yeah. away. Yeah. Get yeah, the yeah. answer right away. Well, and when it, I type this... Kiss Amusement Park, it says Kiss Amusement Park Las Vegas and Kiss Amusement Park Myrtle Beach. Well, of course, yes. they have amusement so something's, parks. Something's well, up they here. They probably have a ride. Uh, yeah. Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park. Yes. Oh. There we go. It's in Wikipedia. Um, also known as Kiss in the Attack of the Phantoms, in a 1978 television film starring American hardcore rock band Kiss, the film's plot revolves around Kiss, who use their superpowers to battle an evil inventor, Abner Devereaux, played by Anthony Zerbe. And to save the California amusement park from destruction. And you caught, yeah. it some, you caught it some Saturday when Jimmy Carter was president, and you yeah. never saw it again. Fell asleep on a couch. Yeah, and you <laughs> wonder what was it all a dream? <laughs> no, there it's, it is. It's actually oh, a great right. premise because it is what Kiss stood for. It's Kiss is defending mindless fun. Yeah, that's what an amusement park is, and Kiss is going to stand up to well, battle so against anybody taking it down. Kiss tried to come out as like these scary evil like rockers. Guar. Mm-hmm. They wanted to be Guar. And every there five year old in the world was like, I, I love them. them. Yeah. yeah. And you know, that, what's really horrifying is when they took their makeup off and you're like, that's what the, the Lick It Up video? You're like, yeah, these yeah. guys are hideous. But that was the 70s, too, when it was like, okay, you can't just rock. you got to have a shtick, man. Frampton's uh-huh. got his talk box. You know, everybody's got to have a little something to put them over the edge. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to wear like makeup. Yeah. And you're yeah. so right yeah. about Google because there was no way to find out about this back then. And I, 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 you have to find the biggest Star Wars geek on the planet. I'm like, was there a Wookiee special? I used to work at Circuit City and this guy knew the serial number on the trash compactor. Like, he knew everything. <laughs> and I was like, was there like a Wookiee special like in the... Late seventies, early eighties, saw the holiday Christmas special. Nice. I was like, no way. That's yeah. funny. I, like, I thought it was a dream. Best. That what Google for my age gr- range is is the one like superior nerd who always hung out at the comic book shop. It was like it, it, it was cell block one one three eight, yeah. right. gentlemen. I, I, I <laughs> remember settled every argument. I remember stupid things from movies or you remember things that aired maybe once, just once, and you're begging people to remember and nobody does. Like I it's a good thing about having a sibling. I had shared that with my sister, so a lot of times I'll be like, Hey, do you remember Banana Man? She's like, no, no, no. And I Googled it, and I found Banana Whenever Man. Whenever Eric ate a banana. A- a- excerpts of Banana Man came on from late 80s on Nickelodeon. Uh-huh. It was Banana Man. Yeah. I was like, a show that me and my sister are convinced we watched when we were little kids. And we, it, 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 all we know, remember is it involves a tiny train and a witch on like some cheesy set. And wasn't Mr. Both, Rogers? Yeah, that sounds like it Mr. Rogers. It wasn't Mr. Rogers. Was it Pinwheel? It, I don't know what Pinwheel is. It may have been Pinwheel. We have no idea what this thing is. It almost sounds it like HR the hell Puffin out of stuff. Us. 
Oh, yeah, you're right. What was that other one that came on? Calliope? They had a, a train, didn't they? We got to write all this down and do some research after the show. <laughs> it was Calliope. You guys remember the Slee Stacks up there? I noticed. Yep, Land yeah. of the Lost. There you bro. go. Uh, I, yeah. That was my yeah. favorite, man. The best. Yeah, I used to love If you watch it now, you're like, oh, I used to love this. Yep. It's yeah, that was still uh, better than the movie. It's still better yeah, than the movie. Totally. Than the movie. I went in there hoping it was going to be like similar. They'd do a lot of callbacks. It was so bad. Yeah. So bad. And I love those guys, too. It's nothing worse when you have a good cast and a bad movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know how hard it really is. That's why I don't like to shit on things, because it must be impossible to make a movie. Did you guys watch uh, on your show Mar- uh, The Ides of March? Yeah. That's an example of that, where I liked everybody in it, but I thought when they ended the movie, I was like, what, did you guys find out the movie was due tomorrow and this is the ending? What the fuck? I was upset at Ides of March because I thought it was going to be this great, powerful, Oscar-winning thing. political thriller. And as soon as I found out what the that the trick was going to be, this, like, oh, he slept with a girl, I'm like, that's what it we're doing It was so with awful. This? And here's the thing that they concluded with. To me, it was like, so... In the end, Ryan Gosling quit this guy who he ultimately tried to go back to and bribe because, but he first quit him because the man was a man of no character. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with him, him cheating on it, his wife. Nothing to do with him. He was disappointed and disillusioned to find out this man had, it, it was a man of ill repute. And so now he doesn't want to work for the campaign anymore. Rather, he wants to go to the rival campaign. But when he finds out the rival campaign doesn't want him, he wants to go back to the other campaign and then dupe him into hiring him. So now you're going to dupe him <laughs> into hiring him. Only to at the very end of it, you know, give up your moral compass. I don't, I don't understand. And it just, it doesn't matter how riveting the performances are because you, everybody's great in that movie, but uh-huh. eventually you're like done. I'm right. fucking out. I just didn't get <laughs> this that. This is not going to happen. Done. Same thing with Brave because Brave was this. It's a Pixar movie, so you're really excited about it. They sure. always make is great that stuff. Stinky? Brave, it, it takes such a stupid turn. And again, you have that as a theater, as a moviegoer, you're sitting in there you're and committed. you're saying, "This is what we're doing with all these great toys." It's like when a baby gets a toy and it decides to make a fort out of the box yeah. instead of the thing that you got it. Right. You're like, no, that's that, that's not what you should be playing with. Or the guy's yeah. driving 30 in a BMW on the 405. It's like <laughs> fucking scoop, bro. Let's use that thing. Freddie, you yeah. were talking earlier about how um, people, when you're young, you're stupid and you don't know what's going on. Like, yeah. Remember you used to sit through any movie because you're in the movie theater, you got to watch the whole movie. Right. Do you remember the first movie you realized, this sucks, i got to get the fuck out of here. I know what my movie is. Dick fucking Tracy. I was I will sweating in that fucking Dick theater. Tracy, and I will totally agree with you because yeah, that movie sucked, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I, I hate when movies like we're gonna make it look like you're reading a comic book. Yeah, no, you're a. I, it's I, the same I'm thing a, Batman Forever did. I must be a sucker. I loved Dick Tracy. You loved Dick Tracy. Oh. When did you see it last? Mumbles. I was ten. I literally haven't seen it. Since I must I have 10. been around the same, and I was yeah. just like, I was in the theater sweating, dude. Yeah. Like, I gotta get the fuck. I, you know out what? Of here. Honestly, I am such so, like so thorough about shitting on movies that I have seldom I'm, in my life. I don't think I've ever walked out on a movie. Yeah, I didn't walk now, out of Dick Tracy. The only one I ever did was The Last Airbender. <laughs> yeah, walked out on it. And it was on somebody else's dime, right? Yeah. Like, I'll never walk out on my own dime. I was dime. pissed I had to pay for parking. It I was went on, on, it was on, it was on <laughs> my serious. dime. And I, I told Steve, I'm like, dude, if you want to, if you want to leave, Steve's like, Ellis, it's not just that the movie's bad. It's that I feel like a bad person and I'm going to do bad things to people if I stay in the theater. <laughs> so we, we told Steve, like, just walk around the mall and go to the it gap. Was so and bad. We'll meet up afterwards. Like, I remember a quote from that review because it's true. I, in the theater, I heard somebody sleeping. Oh, wow. And I was jealous. Hey, you know something? <laughs> I, 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 I'd fallen asleep in, in theaters, and, and I fell asleep during March of the Penguins, and then I also fell asleep for a little bit during Inception. I'm not going to lie, and that's right up my alley. I love that kind I of movie. I fell asleep twice in the movies, but they were like midnight showings, yeah. and it was like Batman 2 when the Penguins were mm-hmm. walking down the street to attack Batman. That's when I was started, started yeah. to fade out. And then the second one was um, The Bodyguard, and it was just really late. Yeah. And I was just like... I fell asleep. <sighs> at the Godzilla 1998 movie. Our town, or like three towns over, Hampton had just gotten this huge movie theater and Godzilla was opening. The one with Matthew Broderick. Yeah, tanked. And oh I my was God. So the puffy soundtrack. Excited. <laughs> and I'm in the movie theater. I won a t shirt because I answered a trivia question right before the show. <laughs> like they had that dipshit with a microphone up there. It was like, yeah. okay, who knows? Where did the original Godzilla take place? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ellis does. Yeah, I got to yeah. tell you a story now. This is embarrassing, too. I don't oh, know if I've ever it. told That's this. kind of story. The first time I ever did stand-up, I wanted to do stand-up. I wanted to do stand-up. It was right around that time, and I skipped many years after this. But uh, Did you jump on stage at a movie theater? No. Oh, it was right. Was nice. I, was, I was walking around Hollywood, and mm-hmm. there was all these signs for the Matthew Broderick Godzilla movie coming out. It was like, mm-hmm. this bus is longer than his tail, or shorter oh, than his yeah. tail. Yeah, his claws are bigger than this billboard. Yeah. So I'm, I, I was and reading. they only showed you the eye. Yeah. And that's a problem. When Talk you only about. see the eye, you're like, how shitty does yeah. the rest 
rest of this thing look. Yeah, yeah, it's like a girl's us... Facebook p- profile picture. Yeah. It's like, I mean, that's, <laughs> she just has a picture. <laughs> this is going to suck. So I was reading We're this. We're not going to meet for coffee. I bought a stand-up book, you know, like everyone does, like a Judy yeah, Carter yeah. book. The and answers I, are in here. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, don't do it at a comedy club the first time. Do it at a coffee shop. And I was going to all these open mics at coffee shops, and nobody's fucking listening. Nobody's right. laughing. I'm like, I'm going to the fucking Laugh Factory. Right. So I went to the Laugh Factory. I watched a couple times. And this is months after the movie now. And I had this whole plan in my head where I was going to do this thing from the Godzilla movie. But it was gone. <laughs> but I didn't, re- I didn't realize it was gone. I mean, I realized, but I thought everyone would know. I get up on stage at the Laugh Factory to do my three minutes, and I just say, you know... His dick is longer than this stage. <laughs> and all I heard was cars driving down Sunset. It was oh. so fucking bad. And you may have been yanked off stage if Harvey was running the, the, the no ship swear words. that night. No dirty words. Yeah, that's right. Harvey Thank at you. the Laugh Factory will always... He's a nice guy. They cut the mic, right? They would cut the mic off. You had three minutes at the Laugh Factory. And it sometimes it would be a packed room. And so you could actually have a good three minutes. And yeah. like, oh, this is... I feel like a real comic. And you... But you weren't allowed to swear or say anything filthy or else they cut your mic off. And then you you can't come back for four weeks. I think it's yeah. That was the big deal. I actually never went. Uh, I did, you know because I always had to work the phones and you had to go yeah. camp out on mm-hmm. Tuesday, right? Yep. You had to yeah. start out there and be in line with Zorba and the su- and the <laughs> likes. And so uh, uh, <laughs> you got, he doesn't no, have internet, folks. No offense. <laughs> You well, guys, the, the hostel might don't don't discredit him that much. The hostel he's staying at. That's right. Yeah. That's you guys want to take a couple questions from fans real quick? Sure. sure. Uh, I'm not sure if how this works. Can you ask Mark if he dated Katie Sackoff or did Christian? Too many rumors. Um, Look at all these. No, rumors. I don't. No, we're just we're we, Christian knew yes. her and uh, before I did, and then I met her through the Schmo show. So I've never dated Katie, but I'd be happy to take her to the Olive Garden. Schmo fan asks, when will all you guys be on the Schmo's podcast? Wouldn't we love to know soon? Too? Yeah, what yeah. the fuck, dude? <laughs> yeah, Mark, yeah. when are we? Uh, it should be. It should happen soon. If you remember the name of that River Phoenix, uh, what's it called? Movie? Oh, we can find out right it now. Was from 1984 or five. Then I'm we'll not... have an hour long podcast just. On I'm going to air to 1985. River Phoenix. Ethan Hawke. I'll look it up for you. Um, if I can get this thing going. Well, River. originally, I, w- I wanted to have Simone on actually the week before we saw Van Halen because we were going to see Van Halen twice in a week, and I wanted to have you on. And I brought up the Harloff, and he's like, "That has nothing to do with movies." And it I'm was like, called Explorers. Right. Explorers with I Ethan Hawke and River Phoenix. I would never have gotten and that. Robbie fight. Not even at gunpoint. Fucking remember it? I don't know. That was <laughs> Van Halen has everything to do with Fast Times at Richmond High. It's up. Well, yeah, but try telling Harloff that again. That's what it you opens, and him. It the, opens the movie and closes the movie. When you and Harloff have your boxing match, your New York versus Philly thing, I might be rooting for you. I don't know who I'm pulling for. Hey, you come Philly because it's southpaw and point towards Philly. <laughs> <laughs> All of life's answers can be found in the Rocky movie. That's the truth. <laughs> I got gaps. You got gaps. Especially Rocky three and four. Tremendous. Mm-hmm. Hey Rocky, take it. Some people zoo. like the others better though. If someone like I don't like one as much as everyone else does for some reason. Uh, I can, like can, three can I say? And, four. Um, and, and and I think it's I a great movie. I, I I dare to say that um, they had it on their side that he came out with that movie in the bicentennial year because America was very in love with America in 1976. And there's a lot of movies that may have been a little bit better that came out that year. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, but, yeah you're wrong. But I, I, it I was one wrong. of those where the times allowed for all this to no, happen. You're, you're allowed. You're allowed to be wrong. Okay. Thanks, guys. You're, That's what makes America great. So, hey, the Wright brothers failed too. Yeah. At one point, <laughs> you know what's great? The, the, the reason why you find Rocky and Rocky Two slower is because they made Rocky Four, and mm-hmm. that's like a, the best music video for John Cassidy. There's so and the many. Brown Band yeah, there's so many seen. montages in that movie. There's like oh, at least two or three. And right? then you watch mm-hmm. the first Rocky, and you're like, well, "How long are we going to be at this pet shop? <laughs> Show me a montage, for God's sakes!" But you still get into it after yeah. a while. And as soon as he's cracking those raw eggs and he chugs it, you're Dude, like, "I am going really to work a out." Chick-flick. The first Rocky is a love story mask at chick flick. Hey, you with, can be a dumpy girl gloves. that works at a pet shop and fall in love with it, and some guy who's huge and is famous is gonna is gonna treat you with Date respect. You on the first well, day. he wasn't famous at that point. No, he was a nobody, but yeah. he was on his way though. There was heat. There was heat. Uh, he came to the gym looking for someone. There was heat. That date rape scene. You just gotta you gotta avert your eyes. You're like, look, he's doing. He's gonna do a lot of good things for this woman I think eventually. I should stay. You should stay. It's the longest date rape that ever. It lasted 23 years. It's a nice house. <laughs> The real you. nice house. Someone's asking how Dark Knight Rises will be. I don't know if you know that. Um, I I don't <laughs> know, but here's the thing: Dark Knight Rises doesn't have to be 
as great as Batman Begins and The Dark Knight was. It just needs to finish the story. Yeah, I man. just I want it to competently finish the story that we're being told because I love the first two of those movies. So they can amazing. they can descend, but as long as they do it respectfully, but not like Matrix, where you're like, Whoa. a lot of people what? love The Empire Strikes Back the most out of the original trilogy. Yeah. I I don't I'm not sure I agree with them, but nobody like nobody hates Return of the Jedi. Some people yeah. shit on the Ewoks, but it was a great closing yeah, was... to that trilogy. Mm-hmm. So I people be, shit I'd on the that. Ewoks and they shit on Jar Jar Binks. And you know what? I could see what they're doing, saying, but you know what about Jar Jar Binks? He's the comic relief element. He's the person you're supposed to be annoyed by. He's there for that reason. It's not like they were like, oh, they're going to love this guy. You know what I mean? You're very Brian why Bonner. Why do I think somebody in my family's pitching me at Thanksgiving dinner <laughs> that it seem? <laughs> Look, he's just, he's not going to eat that much. He's going to be the comic relief. <laughs> Monarch did a very smart thing there, and he decided to, to defend Jar Jar Binks an hour and a half into this podcast because he knows we don't have a lot of time. I know. That's to like go defending into that. pedophilia <laughs> at this point. I'd be very. <laughs> it, it, it walks softly, my friend. But yeah. George Lucas, you know, he won't admit it. He knew how bad he fucked up with Jar Jar because you know that he had Jar Jar more in the the next two movies there's than got, you yeah. actually saw. There's because- got to be no more bigger paradox of a love hate for a guru like him. Of even his own fans George who love, Lucas. yeah, who love and hate him simultaneously for the things and, he's done. And I, I don't know, Brian. I'm sure you have thoughts on this, but like people shit on George Lucas, and it's fine because he's it, the prequels weren't great, mm-hmm. and and he's and he's he's tinkering with the old movies. But every time you shit on George Lucas, I think you should still have to acknowledge the greatness that he put into the world and how much happier of a human you are because my you got to Paul, experience Star Wars. My friend Paul loves the prequels. He just loves uh, them. Jacob Siroff, who I just worked with, swears by him. Jacob he, he Siroff, I worked with too, yeah. and I want to have him on the podcast just yeah. because so we you need guys a prequel can defender. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, and he even sat down in uh, San Diego this week, and he's like, I, I, I'm one of those guys who likes the prequels. I'm sorry. I was, I was like, I don't tell Mark Ellis that. I said, he had a Red 5 license plate. You do not want to tell that guy that. I have, <laughs> I have two license plates. I retire license plates like the Boston Guard and retire jerseys <laughs> i have red five and jedi k and oh, funny enough, you, you have a parquet floor oh inside God. your car as well <laughs> so you would have been the right guy to ask about the star wars special in 1978 or 1978 that's right yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right that's uh. it's pretty interesting how many people get bent out of shape about that but those guys who get mad at george lucas have to remember yeah he giveth and he taketh away you're mad because he gave you this great thing and you felt like something was taken away yeah. but you have to ultimately realize you love the very thing he gave you you yeah. know yeah it's like if you shit on the spaghetti incident you also have to praise how I great like the spaghetti appetite incident. for destruction was i don't have <laughs> anyone I think people would have shit on any movie he made. I mean, it's just like they were expecting things they couldn't do. They didn't have the original actors in it. They didn't have yeah. what they. I don't know. I just yeah, like, but it, it, they, they weren't good. What and didn't you like about it? Is because I like watching them. I'm not like my friend Paul, like I told you earlier. But I don't hate them like these other people do. Mm-hmm. Like I, you and do. This is why I think a lot of people who saw the prequels in the theater weren't sure how they felt about it. it it's almost like you go to summer camp and you're like, no, the counselor definitely didn't touch me. <laughs> right. But when you're in the theater watching that for the first time, Meatballs. you're so nervous and you are so anticipating of this experience it's going to have that you don't know what you're seeing. But now when I go back and watch those, it still feels the acting is stiff and it looks like everybody is nervous. Because they're in a Star the Wars movie. So it's like everybody oh, is playing sure, yeah. in Game 7 of the NBA Finals. Tight. And yeah. and they open up and everybody's missing shots that they usually make. That's what watching those movies feels and then like. There's, there's a lot of eye candy. Yeah. But the, but the actual, the genuine connection that you felt with Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and Princess Leia, it just wasn't there in and, the same And it was way. organic the first time because it's almost like yeah. that naivete of how you might do well your very first set on stage. Because right. you have nothing to compare it to. Yeah. So it's complete honesty. Yeah. They didn't know they were going to be this juggernaut massive hit. Matter of fact, there was a special on today that said when George Lucas came along, you know, they were very much into gritty, hardcore dramas for, for you know, considering good movies. Yeah. Like French Connection, like all those movies, The Sting, these are all like adult movies. And then when Star Wars came along, they were like, a lot of movie investors were like, we don't want to get in bed with sci-fi. That's for kids. You're not going to get any adults yeah. involved. Yeah, you can have the merchandising yeah. rights, You Lucas. keep it. <laughs> you keep it. This this all sounds cockamamie. We and, don't and, want uh, that. This, sounds, this just sounds half half I, I don't want it. Everyone's asking where Christian is, and do you guys get along off stage? <laughs> we never talk off to of each the, other off of the uh, and, YouTube. Unless I mean. we're doing reviews, we never talk to each other. Really? Yeah, no, no, no. We're we're great buddies. I figured you were. I, yeah. You guys have good and, chemistry. And, and Christian's a comedy store guy like these guys too. So and he, a hell he of a comic too. Comedy when comedy I started, right. he was my like little young like adversary kind of counterpart, but we found yeah. friendship in each other. Like, who's yeah. this other twenty-one year old getting laughs? laughs? And I remember we'd see each other. He was a killer. killer. He, he was yeah. a killer. He was that showcase blower upper. Like, he always delivered on Showcase. I remember walking out of the improv with a UTA packet. I just wanted to touch the packet. I was like, holy crap, man. Industry. And uh, worst movie of the year so far? Do you have an opinion on that, anybody? Mm, 
Uh, Joyful Noise was a bad way to kick the year off with Dolly Parton and Queen Latifah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have seen that coming. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but, People usually say they can't can't say what their favorite movie is, but do you have a favorite movie? Like Of all time? Of all time. Yeah, it's, it's, either, uh, it's either Star Wars A New Hope or Star Wars Return of the Jedi. You like Return of the Jedi and New Hope better than Empire Strikes Back. Yes, what? sir. Like you said earlier, most people like Empire Strikes Back. What don't you like about Empire Strikes Back? I I'm it. call me an asshole. I like a happy ending at the end of my movie. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to have all this shit. It's like, okay, look, we're gonna end the movie. We still gotta rescue Han. We still gotta kill the bounty hunter. It's we gotta figure out what this new Death Star thing is. Can we just? Ha I just want to end a movie with a parade. And that's what I hated about Phantom Menace most of all is because Phantom Menace was ending on an Empire-like moment and then they throw this fucking parade for no reason. <laughs> it's like, we just had a lot of people die. Let's yeah. celebrate. Yeah. Let's, let's have everybody walk down. But it's the middle movie and you know it's going to be, you know, fixed. I didn't know that when I was when that's I was true. Seven. You don't know that. You know, it's hard. It's hard to come up with a favorite because there are so many. But I think the one that I love the most that I go it like I compare to life is Unforgiven. It's my because I love westerns, Great, but it's a modern western and there's just so many layers to it. Yeah. That to me, I would actually say that's my favorite movie Clint of all Eastwood, time. Yeah. And I can't necessarily watch that movie all the time. Right. You know, I could watch Three O'clock High every day. I just love that movie. Great. <laughs> but uh, but you know, this Two is classic. Yeah, exactly. But Unforgiven is actually a movie that like. I, I, I think you can live your life by, I mean, you don't want to be like William Money, but at the same time, it's just, there's something that is synonymous with Clint Eastwood in that character that's just. Um, and that was the perfect time for Unforgiven to come out because it came out in the early 90s and nobody had made a good Western for a while. Mm -hmm. And you're right, it's a modern Western that it's not like those spaghetti Westerns, which are great, right. but there's always that one or two cheesy scenes when like the punch sound effect comes in well, late. Well, yeah, when he was younger and he did the Man yeah. With No Name series, it's like that, you know, they, that Sergio Leone stuff, they created that genre, but yeah, it was almost like Kung Fu. But then Sam mm -hmm. Peckinpah came along, and he was like Tarantino of his time. Yeah. But since '69, there really wasn't, and, and you know, I, I, I'm, and I'm sure I'm going to get bombarded for this, but not one to speak of a western. And America was kind of preempted before that with Dances with Wolves. It's like, okay, we can pay attention to a very boring movie because mm -hmm. there might be a great payoff in the end. And mind you, Unforgiven, there is an enormous payoff so in the good. end, yeah. enormous payoff. I could probably watch Young Guns too ten times more than I can watch Unforgiven. But Unforgiven's the better. I film. watched Tombstone. Young Guns Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are both Hollywood westerns. Tygo, Tygo's the Young Guns Two because of Blaze of Glory. Yeah, and I you can go to that. Hell, that, that you can go to Hell, Hell, Hell line is pretty good too. Oh, it, one of my favorite lines in movie yeah. history: "Billy the Kid, Yoo-Hoo, I'll, right, I'll make you famous." famous. That's the best line that ever. That is Jordan walking out for the opening tip in '98 <laughs> against the Jazz. I agree. Yeah. I still Mel think Man Young Guns One is a better movie. I'll, I'll tell you, but you got this. Charlie Sheen in there, yeah. so that is good. <laughs> but they're both studio movies, and that's they the are. movies people would bring up. Is what are you talking about, Young Guns? It's like, and I love Young Guns, and I watched Tombstone down in San Diego, but it's a bad Hollywood studio version. Unforgiven is gritty. They have bad teeth. They speak bad language. Tombstone's like, got some great. grittiness. Yeah. You know, Tombstone's pretty... Tombstone's got grit and good lines. Like I'm your Huckleberry. Oh, oh yeah. I love it. Who win if we're gonna march madness western lines? Who wins in the game between you, who I'll make you famous, and I'm your Huckleberry? That's an overtime ball. I like I'll Make You bad. Famous, but I think a lot of people would say the other. I think it would lose, but yeah, I'm, I'm going down with that shit. I was a big Bon Jovi fan back then, so it's like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Don't 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 hide from it. You can still be a Bon Jovi fan. Uh, he hasn't done anything lately. That is really. You know, uh, oh, there's a lot of middle-aged women that might disagree. They probably <laughs> My mom would. being one of them. <laughs> she thinks he's in his prime right now. Bon Jovi may be the one guy that could get three generations of groupies backstage. He could probably get a grandma, a mom, and a, and a daughter. <laughs> he's a pretty decent guy. Have you ever heard he his bio? Like, like being married to the same gal, and yeah. like, like he's like a really Huge decent dude. Hab Habitat for Humanity. I remember when I, a lot of his money. When I was a kid, I used to see his albums, and I was scared of rockers. I thought they were like bad news, but I like the Beastie Boys and rap. Oh, but yeah. I'd see these rock Here's, albums, and they look so scary. Let's Let's tie it all together. This might be another crazy memory I had, but I remember being a kid and getting some sort of Google this, some sort of Star Wars record, Christmas record or something that either Bon Jovi played on or his dad. <laughs> I've never heard this what, one. Was it like on the on like a free record? You would no, get? no, no, like no. Forty five. No, no, no. It was an album. Okay, it was some sort of Star Wars album. Oh, wait, here we go. Amazon Christmas in the Stars Star Wars Christmas album. Oh boy! Featuring John Bon Jovi. I don't know if it's John Bon Jovi, and it was all. Look at this. Bon look at Jovi this cover. Was all one word. <laughs> I'm gonna show this on the. Uh, oh wow! On the internet. Hold on. I See think I Steve. I think Steve is just testing Google. I think this is yeah. Steve. <laughs> no, there is a Star Wars. Google. There is a Star Wars Christmas album, and there is a there is a guy from Tatooine. It looks like look it, sitting by the fire with a glass of cider. C3PO and R2D2 are next to it, and there's a bunch of robots in the background in a nice like wood. 
I don't know what this place Are is. Are they at the Star Wars Cantina Bar on Moss Island? No, they're not. This is like uh, some back robot area where they're celebrating Christmas, featuring the original cast, R2-D2, Anthony Daniels as C-3PO. Like, it must be just the, the droids, it looks like, because there's only robots well, on the cover. Well, those droids did a lot of... A bit, those droids did more press for Star Wars than George <laughs> Lucas did. Yeah. R2-D2 and C-3PO, those guys would never say no right. to a gig. I'm right. glad we didn't put money on that, because I would have said, you're crazy. Like, I would have been like, there's no Star Wars Christmas album back then, but you got it. But there's something with Bon Jovi on that. Too. Oh, oh, is there? Yeah. It doesn't say that. His, li- his real last Google name is Google. Bon Jovi. Okay. Yeah, and and maybe it's... Let's do Star Wars Bon yeah. Jovi. And I yeah. want it. Somebody just asked you to do your... Do you do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression? No, that's Christian. Oh. I, 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 when I was thinking about this earlier, I don't know if Steve does any impressions. I'm so jealous... Especially guys like Freddie, who are great at impressions, but they don't abuse it on stage. Like, I'll see Freddie crush for an hour and not touch an impression. Yeah, that's And if I had all those, if I had Morgan Freeman at my I like disposal, to know I can, I'd, I'd like to know I can win the race without the nitrous, but sometimes I'll put it in. <laughs> like Vin best. Diesel, yeah. 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 I do one impression, and it's, it's, hey, Willie! It's out. <laughs> yeah, that's Al. all I can do. It's dead on. It's a, that's you, a great, it's, that's a uh, great one. Holy shit, you're right. Check this out. Two for Star two. Christmas in the Stars. Christmas in the Stars Star Wars Christmas album is a record produced in 1980 by RSO Records. How do we not know about this? I don't know. And you I was born in 79. I, I, I missed out on you that. You combine Star Wars and Bon Jovi and I don't know about it? Yeah, we got to get the MP3. I bow to you, Steve Simone. It features recordings of Star Wars themed music, Christmas songs, and a droid factory. That's what we thought from that cover, where the robots make toys year-round for s claws. And then down here it says, the album is notable for featuring the first professional recording of John Bon Jovi, credited as John John Bon, Gu- bon Giovi. Bon Giovi, that's his real last name. Oh, yeah. His birth name. Who sang lead vocals on the R2-D2, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. <laughs> we gotta... <laughs> we gotta get this MP3. This is how tough it is to be a fan of music that is that is past its prime, so to speak. Yeah. Right. Because I have every band hail now, but now you really have to look for songs like that. Like, I found... Uh, I was listening to Joy to the World that Eddie Van Halen recorded in 1989. Yeah, you're looking for little wayward nuggets of, of things, no matter how yeah. bad, as long as it's different. Uh huh. You know, yeah. it's like you'll take as instead long as of the jump, people, yeah, so the people you love are in it. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. That's why. That's why Did everybody still goes to see the prequel. Concert? Did I ever burn you that concert where Van Halen's playing covers from like they were, when they were a bar band in the 70s? No. And the best is they're playing like Disco Duck by Rick D. Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh my God. I, got, I remember that. I got, with Pearl Jam, I got that way to the point where I could only find like obscure live, like, um, uh, bootleg things mm-hmm. because I was just like, I, I can't hear anything from 10 again. I got to hear some weird thing where he went off on some freestyle. That... It's got to, and I like Pearl Jam a lot, but it's got to be so nice to, to be a Pearl Jam nut because they have their own channel on Sirius. Like they, yeah. they're so giving other fans yeah. when a band will go out and they're like, you know what? Like I'm a comic and most comic we don't like to have our, our stuff taped and put on YouTube. Right. You don't want we to play. authorize it. Right. But Pearl Jam's like, you know what? Any live show you come to well, you know what here's the, the bootleg, is, enjoy so it. So much of comedy's based on the unexpected. And comedy has yeah. a very short shelf life, but a great song, you, it becomes part of your life. You, you know, want to hear different. You don't just over, they, you don't just tell over, that joke. Over, they expect over. you to tell that joke yeah. every time. Yeah, because yeah. telling a joke is the same idea as saying I'm going to go around the corner and scare you when you walk by. You know what I mean? It's yes. like, well, if mm-hmm. I know, then uh, it's not going to work very well. Yeah. You might still be able to frighten me if you yell out enough, but yeah, the Mark Ellis part of this podcast is that he just wishes he could play music. That's pretty <laughs> much what I've been bitching about. Somebody's asking you how you got certified on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if that's a big deal. But... <laughs> Ask Christian. Yeah, it's so a you huge guys are... deal. We're the first video reviewers to ever be certified on Rotten. Tomatoes. Oh, right on. And awesome. um, and and it's huge. And uh, it it you know it's still like we still have that feeling where we're like punk rockers where we're in a screening sitting next to Leonard Malton, right. but but we're still sneaking in. Right. You know, I still feel like the renegade breaking yeah. in there. You get and... press passes, but you still go in the back. You yeah, still sneak in. yeah, and and you're you're, you're worried somebody yeah. some some old usher is going to yeah. yank you out at any moment. Can I get you a popcorn, it's like having Mr. Your first, first beer after you're 21. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm. Okay. They're going to tell me to beat it. Where we are right now, we're not drinking in high school anymore, but we're drinking in college where, like, your parents kind of know what's going on, (laughs) but they're not going to... I remember my parents, when I was, like, 19, they're like, you know, when you're home for Thanksgiving, you can have a beer if you want. I remember coming home for Thanksgiving. I was, like, 19 years old. The Wednesday before Thanksgiving used to be my favorite holiday in my 20s. I used to call it Drunk Wednesday. It's my favorite holiday, yeah. Because everybody would hang out, and I remember being with one of my high school buddies, well, all of my high school buddies. But me and my buddy Nick stayed up to like five in the morning. I come home. I go, Mom, I'm not even going to lie to you. We're blind drunk. We got dropped <laughs> off because I was like, no, my parents are cool. You were feeling my mom was awake getting Thanksgiving dinner ready. How old are you? 19, 20. Okay. I don't think I was 21 at the time. I go, Mom, I'm not even going to lie to you. We're blind drunk. 
we're, we're going to keep on drinking. And she was like, okay, boys, we'll be boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a shame. Putting the Thanksgiving turkey in the oven. That's Thanks, hilarious. Mrs. C. <laughs> There's something about going to college where they just trust you. It's like if you can, if you can, if you can go away from home for a semester and not totally shit your pants, mm-hmm. the then most, you get the credibility. The most mature I've ever been and the most serious I've ever taken life was my freshman year in college. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm an adult. I have a schedule. Yeah. I'm going to go to the gym. Yeah. I'm going to work out. Yeah. I'm going to eat pizza on the weekends and drink beer, but I'll have, I'll get it together by Monday. It's going to learn how to masturbate so my roommate does. It's such a up. good stepping stone. And, and I never got that because I never went to college. I basically went straight from high school to out here. I, I was drafted out of high school, boys. <laughs> uh, but the thing about college is it gives you that stepping stone into the real world where it's like, I'm not quite on my own, but I am. But like, I was thrust literally from mom's house to mm-hmm. hanging out with 40 year olds. And it's wow. like, I had a hard learning experience of little things you gain in college, little independent things you start to do. And you're like, doing it the, with, you're doing it with a gang. It's not you by yourself. You're yeah. doing it with a gang of guys and you're a all kind of in this together. But yeah. I've also found this, that a lot of ways it perpetuates youthful behavior too, because I had to quickly learn a lot to get along with middle aged people because I was working at Motorola when I was like 18. Yeah. And they didn't want to hear about stupid stories or my, how <laughs> fucked up <laughs> my buddy already, got. They were already broken. Yeah, they were already broken. <laughs> and so they made me act much older than I was. And I never got that college experience. You know what college is? It's the going away party to your childhood. Yeah. And it's like a four year slumber party at times. <coughs> and some make that the is best just of beyond, it. Beyond. Mine was like a 12 year, a 12 year slumber party. That's correct. <laughs> That's <laughs> But in many ways, it's like it comes up like I won't know how to pronounce a certain word that I'm using. It's like I read it somewhere, but I just didn't go to college and mm-hmm. get told how to say it. Right. So a lot of things come up short. and There's got to be a Google app for that. Yeah, and there is. There's a sound one. But someday I do want to go get a formal education. My granddad went when he was 75 to college. He's like, well, let's go. Is that the guy in Alice's bitch? Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Larry Crown. That's, yeah. I want to retire on a college campus. Yeah, I want to teach like a humor communication class. Oh, that'd be cool. great. Yeah, th- there's. I think every comedian, when you you start to see you start to see the older guys that are still doing it, and then you you have this this kind of come down, and you're like, what's going to be my safe landing? Because you don't want to be. You, you know, the old guy like in uh, uh, Mr. Saturday Night that's still no. trying to get a gig at a bowling alley. Hmm. And I think that my come down, I want to be a minor league announcer for a, for a minor league baseball team. Bob Eucherstein. Yeah. Baseball just, so much. Just call, yeah. the, just call the games and just... Isn't that where Bill Murray's living in? I mean, he's still very he's relevant. He's the owner of a bunch But he's of an teams. owner of one. There's oh, really? Yeah, he owns video. one. He just got a, an award from one of the leagues as but, being the best yeah. owner. Yeah, and the speech is great. I, I want to. We should all get together and give Bill Murray an award just to see if he shows up to my apartment to accept. True it. story. <laughs> Saw when the I video. was thirteen okay. years old, I was fascinated with Bill Murray my whole life, and this is crazy. So when I was thirteen years old, I knew Bill Murray's favorite baseball player was this guy named Ernie Banks, Mr. Cub, uh-huh. famous for the expression "Let's play two. Let's play two. Played shortstop, over five hundred home runs when that meant something, and the nicest guy ever. I got his rookie baseball card was a 1954 tops. I made a couple of trades at a baseball card show. Got a rookie Ernie Banks. Card. You made you made the trades at a baseball card show necessary Dude, to acquire an Ernie more, Banks. You traded up. I'm not, I wasn't kidding when I when I was 18. Look, when I was 12, I had more money in my pocket than I do now. <laughs> so when you guys earlier in the show said, "Would the 12 year old version be happy of you?" He'd be like, "You're a failure." He'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like "Tell me you Dude, didn't give I away was, the Ernie Banks." I card. had I had baseball card businesses. I worked in a comic book shop. I sold skateboard parts. I sold illegal fireworks. <laughs> I I could get you term papers. I was like a kid out of a movie. I always had money coming in. Kids like. I had it wired. Life was going to be good. I was going to be a quote unquote businessman, but then right. I realized I have a soul and I can't lie to people. <laughs> but, uh, as a four, 13, 14 year old kid, I made up in my mind that one day I was going to meet Bill Murray and I was going to give him the Ernie Banks card as a token of appreciation for all the laughs he had given me. Uh, do you still have that? Still have, my That's brother great. has it for me. That's really great. Uh, and I had to sell all my baseball cards <laughs> within like, Three months of moving to LA to pay for rent one time. Oh man. Oh, it was so depressing. Vin- I had no change in my car. F- have, have to fly home for some, to see my niece get born. I fly home to grab my baseball cards and I had to sell them for like 10% of what they were worth. Oh. Yeah. Just to make rent. It says in the, the Beckett it's worth 50. <laughs> he's like, I'll give you a nickel. Sold. I was like one of those schmucks yeah. that walks into Pawn Stars where he's like, they say it's worth 5,000. 
I'll give you thirty dollars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the best part of my month when I was a kid is getting the Doctor James Beckett price guide oh, and mess. saying, What was he a doctor of? Yeah. Was he a doctor of He's manipulating a doctor of, children's <laughs> minds? Yeah, runs batted in. <laughs> All I know is that Bo Jackson card was five dollars and that was major currency. Was that seven t- Don Russ rated rookie? Yeah. I wanted the nineteen eighty six Jose Canseco Don Russ rated rookie. That is still that's the, the white whale of my childhood. I've never I've never laid eyes on that card. I, I, I knew like someone who had it and, and in Arizona the Oakland A's uh, it's, it's, it's oh, yeah. training there so we used to go get their autographs the Bash Brothers and I still to this day and you can look at my Twitter timeline once a month I'll tweet Jose Canseco fuck you for charging us you prick because he did <laughs> he charges us our week's allowance five bucks McGuire yeah. would always sign readily Jose Canseco five even, bucks even at the ballpark oh yeah it was at the, it, it's a place in, in uh, Tempe Arizona called Tempe Diablo Stadium and the Angels and the A's would come and play there and you could get right up to them and right you know granted access and every kid had baseball cards so you'd show up with them divvying them up yeah. they'd be signing them you get the Bash Brothers poster out. You'd get one Bash Brother to sign it, but not the other, because yeah. you five bucks. That was like, that's how am I going to get to the next game? You know, if I spend my five yeah, bucks yeah. on you're, this you're millionaire, in a pit, like trading places, buy, sell yeah, all these yeah. kids trading. If cards. I was a ball player, I would charge adult. I would charge adult men. I would say like because you you know what they're going to do with it. You know what the service with this card. If it's a kid, even if even if your uncle gave you five dollars to come up and get my autograph, you're a kid. You got balls to do that. Here's the autograph for free. But, but if you're a dude, but is that million look, you're if getting? You're one of those professional guys that buys them and sells them. You're a jerk off. Yeah. But even if, like, what if you have a kid and you're like, my son's a fan. Can I get it? You See, can even make it to Little Jimmy or something. Like, I, I guess it's if you're making fifty million. What's what? Who what cares? Is, what is what is it if you're missing out on that? Because I it's all in guy, some Cayman Islands account. And yeah, you cash I know. I know, I know a guy that played football for uh, Coach Lombardi. <gasps> and back in the '60s, Lombardi told him he was like, sign every autograph you can because one day they're going to stop asking for it. So do it now. Oh wow, get it out there like and Picasso, I, paint, paint, true. Yeah, and I, I think, I think in the early, early nineties, late eighties, that was like the peak of assholeism for at- professional athletes. Oh right. And I think that second strike, and they, they had a fight to get their fans back. Right. I think professional athletes now seem it could all be marketing. I could be this naive. It could be all done by Madison Avenue and PR gurus, but they seem like they're cooler guys now. Than they were 10, 15 but years But this ago. generation has the has the ability of hindsight where you can look back and like, right, look at all the guys that are mistakes. fucked up from the 80s. Look at all your heroes yeah. from the 80s that we grew up watching and are now broken. They're limping. There's they're fat. No, and, there's no reason not to be cool. Yeah. If a little kid wants your autograph. I think it's disgusting. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree because essentially you're a superhero. Yeah. You know, you're something that they're not going to ever be. One of be. the worst things, one of my most painful childhood memories. I was like nine years old. And they used to have, like, a free suburban newspaper, like the Town Talk. The Penny Saver. Yeah, yeah and it was, like, <laughs> Philly's third base from Mike Schmidt, who was the man. I loved his card. I had a lot of his cards. Right. Had a book signing at, like, it wasn't Barnes & Noble. I forget the name of the bookstore, but he had a book signing. Walden right? Books. B. Dalton. I think it was. I think it was, it was B. Dalton, B. Dalton or Walden. Yeah. Yeah. Old school 80s, right? Yeah. But his book, I remember to this day, the only thing he would sign was the book, and the book called, cost 10 bucks. So we get, me and my brothers get there all early. And I brought all this stuff to get signed. And the manager was like, not going to happen. You get, the only thing he's going to sign is his book. So it was a quote-unquote book sign. Yeah. So my mom's cool. We each get a book. But we're waiting in line. The only person that was there before us was this little kid who I remember was from Youngstown, Ohio. And he was like, Mike Schmidt's my favorite baseball player because he's from Youngstown, Ohio. And he waited in line with us all day. And they were like, you have to buy the book. He's not going to sign anything. And this kid's like my age. He's like eight, nine years old. He was like, I'm I just like need. Santa. He was like, I just need to get an autograph. I'm sure Mike Schmidt's the best guy ever. I'm sure he's gonna give it to me. Oh. Goes up in line, and Schmidt's was like, uh, and his and and Schmidt was with like a handler that was like, yeah. nope, he's only signing books. Beat it, kid. And Schmidt didn't sign him the autograph. And I remember feeling so bad. I was like, mom, and I didn't want to make my mom have to buy this kid a book or whatever. So we went outside. We told my mom, and then we went to go try to find the kid to buy him a book. Now, what? Who knows if he could? He had already shot signed. up the rest of them all. Dude, yeah, it's awful. Yeah. Oh, poor awful. God. If you're listening to this podcast and you run into me, Simone, Shaky, and and, and Freddie and Brian at Shaky's afterwards, <laughs> we'll all give you our autograph. <laughs> yeah, and Freddie will do Morgan Freeman free of charge. Please, no problem. Sir, may I have more? Nope, you're cut <laughs> off. <laughs> all right, guys, we we're, we're kind of over right now. I was supposed to be at my cousin's birthday party. Oh, well, yeah. Is it going all night? They have free booze. Panama. Are there going to be hot seventeen year olds there? <laughs> 
Can we be the Jar Jar Binks of that party? <laughs> we can be. Will there be any songs from Mr. Big being played? It's very possible. Right, I'm into that. We have uh, people saying that they are subscribing to your uh, Schmoes, Mo- Schmoes Knows uh, YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, please. We're, we're trying to get to 100K by Christmas, and all you have to do is go to YouTube, uh, type in Schmoes No, and hit the subscribe button. Never pay to see a bad movie. And occasionally you get guests like Freddy and Steve. Anything else going on with you right now? Uh, I'm single. I live in a one-bedroom apartment. And I'm going to talk to the girl at the gym this week. So Make your move. Keep your eyes open yeah, for that. Yeah, let us know how that goes. Freddie, what's going on with you? Any, anything you're pushing, plugging? Uh, I've got a banquet chicken pot pie in my freezer at home. Perfect. Dude, those are the best yeah, ones. D- really do me, don't look at the fat content because it's going to... I've never looked at fat content in my life, fella. I did, did I just turn this into a 40-something yeah. female book club? Yeah. Oh, don't look at the fat content. <laughs> What and else? Bit, you uh, also this, you have your own podcast, right? Uh, I do. It's called What's Good. It's on the Death Squad Network. Death and, Squad. And then I'll also be at the Comedy Store uh, this weekend coming up in the world famous Comedy Store in Hollywood, California. And I know you sell t-shirts on your website. I do. FreddieLockhart.com. Boom. Get yourself a t-shirt, a koozie, a baby bib. Get it all. A rake. No rakes. <laughs> and a Mike Schmidt autograph. A Freddie Lockhart rake. <laughs> and a Chris Sabo rookie card worth three cents. Yeah, Chris Sabo Diamond Kings. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Ten bucks at one point. How about you, Steve? <laughs> what you got going on? Uh, websites, awesomesteve.com. End of the summer, I'm going over to Afghanistan. Awesomesteve.com. So okay. Yeah, awesomesteve.com. I'll be at the store this weekend. I got a back in the day little kid pod, little kid memories podcast coming out. At first, I yeah. thought you said. At first, I thought you said the, the website's awesome, Steve dot com. I'm like, how did you get Steve dot com? Yeah, I was like, wow, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> Paid a lot of money. To yeah. get Steve. It's awesome, Steve dot com. Yeah. Are you on the Toad Hop Network? Is that where your podcast yep, is going to be? That's where it's going to be. At cool. the Toad Hop. Yep. So is mine. The Schmoes No Podcast, and I'll be at the store this weekend too. All right. Do you guys think we should all hang out? Totally. Sure. Cool. Let's drink adult beverages and talk about the past. <laughs> All right, guys, that's episode five. Thank you so much for coming down. I really appreciate it. Take some pizza, do whatever you need to do, and uh, let's wrap it up. I could use some toilet paper. You running? This isn't playing here. I'm trying to play the out music. Maybe I'll just put it in post. I'll just we'll just do we'll just do a really cool movie quote. You who? I'll make it famous. There we go. (laughs) Burn your house down.